TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can still leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Man, let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if we do go live and you happen to miss the live, this is where all the highlights will be on this one, the lit one live. Don't forget, we do got the Patreon where you can react, where I react to stuff we can't react to on YouTube. This will pays the bill, so if you want to support me in any way, please do so that way. Um, and we got did the Discord too, man, where you can send your requests. Now let's get straight into this, man. This right here is the number one requested thing I've had to do, and and that since it since the four days it's been out, King Von. The Trap Lore Ross documentary, man. Three hours and 36 minutes. Man, what the what the heck? All right, I'm going to do it because ain't nobody else going to do it as a reaction. And if they have to do it, they're not from where I'm from, so it don't matter. <laughs> Let's get into it. Warning, this video contains themes of violence, death, and gang activity. This video is for educational and documentary purposes only. This video is not intending to incite or encourage illegal behavior in any way. Every effort has been made to remove any content which violates YouTube's community guidelines. YouTube, this is for me as well. I know y'all see it, I know y'all watching it. So, hey, matter of fact, let me get out the way so y'all can see it clearly. You feel me? Y'all said y'all needed me to double up. Here's my warning too then. All right, let's get into it, man. This if you'd like to see an uncut version of this video with everything that I can't show you on YouTube, access to my recent vlogs with right. academics and Adam20, access to my exclusive, I could never show you on YouTube. But if you in 80s, gangster rap, just sit back, enjoy the video, and hit that subscribe button. Ever since the 1980s, gangster rap has been one of hip hop's most fascinating subgenres. From the mean streets of gang infested Los Angeles that were brought to life by early gangster rap pioneers like Ice Cube and NWA, to Tupac and Suge Knight taking over the music game with vivid tales of gang affiliated rappers who would bully their way into the music industry. And then you have legends like Jay Z and 50 Cent, whose tales of life in the streets as gangsters made them millionaires hundreds of times over. For decades now, rap fans have been looking for the realest artists. Unpopular opinion, Tupac was an industry gangster, but he was a great musician. He went to a school of arts. He, do, he did not struggle like that. I mean, he was an industry gangster. His lyrics paint the picture of a real life of crime that isn't embellished or fabricated. But when it comes to rappers who truly keep it real, the Chicago drill scene has dominated for the last decade. First popularized by Chief Keith, the Chicago drill wave was characterized by rappers that grew up in the most dangerous blocks in America, with these up and coming artists rapping plainly and honestly about what they experienced growing up. Shootings on the block, disrespecting dead enemies, and constantly being chased by the police. Chicago drill rappers took gangster rap to raw new heights, where the Chuck LaRoss is trying his hardest to be serious. Stories right behind the music could be matched up with the local news reports on the latest homicides. However, what happens when the people doing the killing start making the music too? Because in the years after Chief Keef popularized the violent stories of Chicago gang life, one of those gangsters killing people in the streets picked up a microphone too. And Salute to Chief Keef, man. He always have my respect. He has a lot of Chicago respect. He should have a lot of y'all respect. He a legend. And everybody, a lot of people's eyes. You know what I'm saying? Started rapping in the first person from the perspective of the actual killer. King Von had a reputation in Chicago as a fearless killer before he'd even started rapping. And it's widely believed, based on the statements he made in his own songs, that Von himself could have killed as many as seven people in his career as a gangbanger. With more murders even taking place after he got rich and famous, with it being rumored that Von used his money and influence from the rap game to have old enemies in Chicago killed. And going on a journey which, in my opinion, takes him far beyond a street player who had to kill to survive in the mean streets of Chicago. Because if King Von's tweets are anything to go by, he simply loved killing people. And the sheer amount of people that King Von allegedly played a role in killing has led to intense speculation as to King Von not even the worst person in Chicago like that that's like this is the crazy part. 
for y'all, that should be the crazy part. He's just the most notable person. There's a lot of this in Chicago that keep giving it up like this. Whether he was a full-blown serial killer, a title which King Von's enemies even said that him and his friends took personal pride in. Now, the FBI defines a serial killer as a person who kills over three people with time spans in between them of more than a month. Furthermore, serial killers tend to have an element of psychological gratification which plays a role in the motive for their murders. The FBI also state that a serial killer might seek various kinds of gratification through their killings, such as anger, thrill-seeking, financial gain, or simply for attention. I personally believe that over the course of his career, King Von demonstrated all of these characteristics and can indeed be classified as a serial killer. King Von frequently exhibited behavior in public that conformed with these rules, tweeting regularly about his desire to kill, bragging about having committed specific murders in his music, which attracted him international attention and billboard charting songs, with his drill anthems about murdering rivals, making him a rich man with millions in his bank account. The FBI also point out another characteristic of serial- I wonder if Trap Morales used an AI to do this. Just type, type in chat GPT. King Von, and then it just, just went. <laughs> Killers. For three and a half hours. Specifically that their victims may all have something in common. For example, a demographic profile, appearance, gender, or race. And it would appear that King Von only killed young black men and women from the community he lived in. These were all people just like him, being born into a rundown part of Chicago and growing up with a lot of disadvantages. All that really separated Von from his victims were the fact that they were from a rival territory and he believed that nobody- Ain't this crazy? Ain't this crazy? The way y'all, the way y'all would believe it is there's way more black disciples in Chicago, but there's a heavy population of GDs in Chicago. There's more GDs in Chicago than black disciples, but the black disciples are just more popular. He would miss them. King Von has officially been implicated in four murders, two where he was suspected of being involved, but the police didn't have enough evidence to charge, and one case where he narrowly received a not guilty verdict after a key witness disappeared and a co-defendant implicated himself. Another that he's accused of organizing with five of his closest childhood friends, the shooting of rival rapper FBG Duck in broad daylight at a busy shopping district Von will never face justice for due to him losing his life only months before the busy shop. This was crazy. Now, when he say busy shopping district, he's downplaying it because he's not from there. This is the, this is the, like, l let me, let me try to put it in perspective for y'all. Barney's is, uh, is or, or what's, what's the popular mall in the UK that every, every rapper go to? This is that for us in Chicago. It's, it's, he was in the Viagra circle, Viagra triangle. That's what they call it. He was right off Division and, and, and um, State. I think it's Division and State. Division and State. It used to be a popular nightclub right there. Um, this is where all the elderly men go to mess with, like, 21. This is where 21-year-old women go to mess, find sugar daddies. Gucci's right there. It's, it's real heavily. It's up there. I'm talking about, like, money is over there. <laughs> He's downplaying. It's almost like Rodeo Drive. Let me put it that way. Shopping district Von will never face justice for due to him losing his life only months before the feds would swoop in and arrest all five of his close friends. This particular murder would go down as one of the most brazen assassinates to all five of his close friends. Hmm. This particular murder would go down as one of the most brazen assassinations carried out in Chicago since the days of Al Capone. But in total, there's over 10 murders of which King Von has been connected to over the years. And nobody has looked into all of them in great detail until now. So today, we're going to take a closer look at the man, his past, and his career to find out once and for all if King Von really was the first serial killer in hip hop history. He was in jail for two murders? Yeah, one murder and two attempts. Four shooters and a hail of bullets. All of them were scared of bomb. All of them were scared of bomb. Police found several shell casings in this parking lot. King Von was bloodthirsty. He loved death. He loved killing. I got a lot of fun. Just for how many, I think. King Von had a satiable obsession with murder and violence. Damn, how long do y'all think it took Trap to do this? This is, this is 
I, I was, I like, he should have put me on the team for editing because, you know, I'm one of the best editors on the platform. The shooting leaves one person dead, four others injured. Hey, hey, I know you. Yeah, you know me. I, I, you. King Von. Yeah, Von did have a reputation in Chicago before rap. Uh, I had heard of Von before he started rapping. From some of my out west homies told me about Von, and I was like, hmm. Okay. And then when I seen he started rapping, I'm like, okay, bro, trying to change his life around. That's good. Yeah, see, I don't really be speaking on Chicago rappers because that's neither here nor there for me. <laughs> I'm probably would be considered like a serial killer. They labeled the man a serial killer. Them. If your business kept on employees through the pandemic. King Von, real name Dave Von Bennett, was born on August the 9th, 1994, in Chicago, Illinois. Growing up on West 78th and South Hermitage in an area known as Killer Ward. An area- well, at least he's getting this stuff right. He did some research. Yeah, Von from Killer Ward, okay. We are mainly affiliated with the Chicago gangs, the Gangster Disciples, right. and the Black Peace Stones. Von would attend Barton Elementary School in the area. My family is Black Peace Stones from over there. Yeah, my family is from, from Black Pea Stones from over there. That's funny. Okay. But despite starting life as a fairly normal kid in Chicago, he would be subjected to the influence of gangbanging in his family home from a young age. His father was Walter E. Bennett, a.k.a. Silk, a well-known street dude from nearby Ada Park. Von was mainly raised by his mother, as his father was in and out of jail throughout his childhood. But Von's father was apparently a legend in the streets, with ties to the street gang, the Black Disciples. However, much like Von, despite the fearsome reputation he'd earned in the streets, it would ultimately be this proximity to gang life that would lead to his father's demise, as King Von's dad, Silk, was shot dead when Von was only 11 years old, apparently being targeted by a sniper outside of a skating rink, according to an interview with King Von's uncle. Rest in peace, King Von. Rest in peace, Silk. That's crazy. Like, I'm with Big Bro every day. My killer's dead. He was a sniper rifle. This sh this sh I didn't know that. That's crazy. Somebody got tactical? Get deep, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah a sniper. I hit him with a sniper rifle. They at the, the skate ring, but you know, that's another story. It seems clear that King Von. They couldn't get up on him. They had to hit him from a distance. That's tough. His father Silk was remembered as a legend of the block. However, coping with the loss of his father at such a young age clearly had a negative effect on the mindset of a young King Von. He would tweet and rap in freestyles years later that he simply couldn't sleep after his father's death. Thank you, my daddy. I couldn't even go to sleep. And throughout his teenage years, he would post RIP tributes to his father on Twitter to commemorate his birthdays. Naturally, Von would follow in his father's footsteps, getting involved in local gang politics at a young age, with Von actually telling 16 shot and visuals in his very first first interview that he got involved in the streets in fourth grade, eventually getting his hands on guns by the time he got to high school. He was like, told this is a Chicago story, man. That's how it mostly go. Y'all might be surprised by that. This is no surprise. This is not shocking so far. Pipes in fourth grade, like when you started. I don't pop off. I got beating guns. I mean, I wasn't, it wasn't that hectic. Like, it ain't good. I just been, you know, in the streets, there's also, I like being outside. You know, one of the little boys that like sneaking out, just being outside all day, just doing bad. The gun, all that shit, that shit kind of played to like what? Yeah, like late eighth grade or some seventh, eighth grade when it really got to that point where you gotta hurt somebody or somebody trying to hurt you or you gotta protect yourself. Von would rap on the unreleased song Wait that he jumped off the porch, getting deeply involved in gang politics in 2006 when he was just 12 years old. Von would initially be a member of a local street crew affiliated with the Gangster Disciples called Kill Award, being seen in numerous group pictures with that crew. And affiliates from the area would later post tweets suggesting that Von was indeed putting in work for this crew during his time gangbanging in Kill Award, with Von himself corroborating that he was close to the members in Kill Award where he was born, but making it clear that he's all always been a member of the Black Disciples due to his family affiliation. Now, Von would live around Killer Ward up to around 2008 or 9, after which he would eventually move to the infamous Parkway Gardens housing development. <coughs> this housing complex is notorious for its affiliations with the Black Disciples street gang. Parkway Gardens would later be referred to by insiders as O-Block, but prior to that, it was referred to as Wick City. And here, King Von would meet many of the people who would end up having a huge influence on he did real research. Uh, this, this can't be AI, this is real research. His life and career. People famous for their affiliation to Oblock, whether through the gang wars going on there, or through the music that had been made about the gang war. People like Boss Top, Chief Keef, T-Roy, White White, Duke, 
BJ, Big A, Trey Five, Sheroid, J Money, Platoon, and countless other people that played a big role in Von's life growing up. Von would also attend a new school in the area, the Hyde Park Academy, where he would attend with people from other rival territories with affiliations to the Gangster Disciples. People like FBG Duck, who would even claim in a Twitter exchange in 2014. They was real cool too. FBG and King Von was cool at one point. Every, a lot of people was cool at one point, man. But you know, people start, you know, now I don't know, maybe I don't know, but Chicago is real clicky. People start clicking up, you gotta roll with who you came with. He to have plotted to beat King Von up on the school bus, and people like Lil Mark, who Von would even be seen in throwback pictures with before their feud had escalated into something deadly. Von and his friends started out their gangbanging careers with fistfights with the ops at school, schoolyard scuffles that would unfortunately escalate over the coming years, developing into full-blown gang war with firearms involved. Over time, a teenage Von would begin getting more and more involved in Chicago's street gang conflicts, apparently bringing guns to school as young as age 13. Chop Squad, who went to school with both Von and G Herbo, would claim that Von would even show off guns in class, with it apparently being Von himself who started the trend of teenage gangbangers in their school bringing guns to class. Von was the type of person to bring a pole to school at 13 for. Mm. Like, that's what me and Herb was talking about. He was like, Herb was like, he knew it was real when. When Vaughn walked up to him in school, he was like, he had flashed a pole or something. He was like, Herb knew every day from there it was up. He was like, oh, we bringing guns to school? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's on now. Oh, He's like, man. every day from there, he brought, every day from there, everybody brought guns to school. Oh, he was like, Vaughn was the one to start that off. In fact, G Herbo would even later rap about this on a collaboration with Vaughn called FaceTime, saying that Vaughn showed him a revolver in freshman orientation, an experience which led G Herbo to begin bringing guns to school himself too. Now, King Vaughn was apparently out of control as a youngster. According to one- That's how it be. All, it'd be a domino effect in the rack. Like, one person do it, everybody gotta do it down. Cause you know, one person got the pipe, you 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 gotta want you wanna respect respect yourself. You wanna you wanna protect yourself as well. Not man, I'm about to bring mine too. Fuck it. Story, Von actually did a shooting on prom night whilst wearing his suit after literally tweeting out that somebody better not try him in his suit. So naturally, you can imagine, Von ended up spending a significant amount of time in trouble with the law as a teenager, with large patches of his most formative years spent inside jail cells. Von went to jail for the first time around August 2010, at age 16, for armed robbery, apparently robbing someone for their car at gunpoint, something that he would actually later refer to on his song Armed and Dangerous, saying that he was arrested on August 11th, two days after his 17th birthday, when he was offered 21 to 45... First time I got handcuffs put on me and I had to go down and got booked and all of that, I was age. It was for assault and battery. I was age. I was in seventh grade. Whatever, however old you is in seventh grade. Five years in a plea deal. Von would end up spending time in boot camp, an intense military style I got, I got away with community service though. juvenile program ultimately rewarding him with early release. But soon after that initial charge, Von would catch another in January 2011, ultimately spending 15 months behind bars as a juvenile, being locked up between December 2010 and March 2012. And during this time of incarceration, Von's best friend T-Roy would tweet calling for his release. Eventually, in March 2012, Von would be a free man once again, but he was only free Free for a matter of months, from March to November 2012. But he went straight to IHOP. <laughs> During this time, Buddy. Von would undergo a transformation, going from a gun-toting stick-up kid to a full-fledged killer after witnessing the death of one of his close friends, which, as he put it, turned him into a demon. Okay, I don't know if y'all know about that, but like, and I, I think this is worldwide, man. Something, something can change you, especially in Chicago, though. Especially in Chicago. I'm the founder and CEO. It'd be little moments in life that can make you go left or right. It could be little moments in life that can make you listen to that, the, the devil on your shoulder or the angel on your shoulder. It's just depending how your mind is. You know what I'm saying? Especially in Chicago, it'd be hard to like let stuff go because even before music, people was you know being annoying. Being, they'd talk about it. They, that, oh yeah, we did this, this, and that, this, this, and that. It'll just be, the streets be pulling on you like it's crazy. Before we get into the first murders that King Von was allegedly involved in, I just want to take the time to consider the real reasons why he would be motivated to kill in the first place. Despite covering a lot of gangsters who were hardened killers, 
it's important to consider the social circumstances that need to exist for a teenage boy to start committing murders. Firstly, these areas where King Von grew up in Southside Chicago, Killer Ward and O Block are incredibly poor and dangerous areas. With the last- Yeah, they better do it too. I forgot, I didn't even mention that. Cause it's so normalized, but like, a part of the devil pulling on you is like, you got nobody that's positive in your ear. You got a bunch of people around you that's going through the same stuff. That's going through the same exact household things, the same exact friends losing the same friends. Like nobody in your ear like, man, just be the bigger person. Let's just do something that nobody's in your ear like that in the right even being described by the local Sun Times newspaper as the most dangerous block. Everybody that could be in your ear like that is locked up. All the big homies that know better, like they locked in up. Chicago. Part of the reason why so many of these gang murders in Chicago go unsolved is due to the failure of policing in these areas. Someone like King Von grew up seeing death and destruction as a completely normal thing. And if the police never come to your area to solve crimes or deliver justice, it's easy to see why you would place more trust in street justice than in the state. Furthermore, you really have to ponder whose fault is it really that somewhere like O Block ended up being so poor and dangerous. While it's easy to blame the gangsters and killers there for cultivating a lawless environment, the city and the state politicians ultimately have failed to create the economic circumstances for someone to grow up safely in these areas. Had there been better economic prospects in the hoods of Chicago, perhaps many of these young men wouldn't have been forced into a life of crime and violence. Furthermore, when it comes to the analysis of King Von's eventual transformation into what some have described as a serial killer, there's actually an argument to be made that geography may have played a part in King Von feeling like he could get away with so many murders. I'm glad you said this, Trap. <clears throat> I'm glad you said this instead of just going right into it and doing this and that. I'm glad you covering your bases and <laughs> and making sure you make say all possibilities. The 70s to the 2000s true. have actually been described as the golden age of serial murder. And one possible cause for this phenomenon around this period has been cited as urbanization and the concentration of inner city living. Some people have said that putting so many people in such close proximity ends up offering a unique level of anonymity when it comes to committing crimes in these complicated, busy and overpopulated areas. Put simply, this means that in O Block, the sheer amount of people, overlapping gang conflicts, and normalization of violence on the streets means that somebody like King Von could kill multiple people without attracting too much attention to him personally. As sad as it is to say, in the eyes of the cops, a victim is just another casualty of the gang war rather than a specific crime that could be solved. And it's these circumstances that were the perfect conditions for a young King Von to begin killing people in his community with minimal consequences. And whilst King Von was in jail, gun violence had raged on between the black disciples from Wick City and the rival gang. I grew up in a heavily gangster GD area up north in Chicago on the north side. It's called uh, the North Pole. If y'all wanna go look it up, Chicago North Pole. That's where I grew up. Um, I was born in Evanston, but my mom, we moved, we lived in the jungle. That's what it's called, it was called the jungle. Um, it was off Howard and Jarvis. We lived back in the jungle back there. And then we lived on John Quell. And then we lived, then, then we moved like right on the border of Evanston and, um, Evanston and, uh, North and, Ch and Howard. Um, Howard is the street that separates the first suburb, which is Evanston from the first piece of the city on the North side, which is, uh, Rogers Park. So, I was born in Evanston, but I lived in Rogers Park, if y'all get what I'm saying. Rogers Park is the jungle. Um, it's, some of it is in the North Pole, and then uh, you got, yeah, y'all y'all wouldn't even know what I'm talking about. But yeah, that's where I was from. Thanks <laughs> to Disciples from St. Lawrence and Eberhardt. It's all GDs over there where I was from, and Kings, or Vikings, whatever you want to call them. Vikings, Moles, Stones, GDs. Yeah. My avenues or STLEB. But where I was, it was, it was, it was Moles and GDs. 
T. And during this time, whilst King Von was incarcerated, a 15-year-old gangster disciple from the rival hood by the name of Tuka was murdered. Real name Shondale Gregory, Tuka was shot dead at a bus stop on the 600 block of East 63rd Street on the 12th of January 2011 at around 6.48 p.m. It was around that time that a masked gunman jumped out of a vehicle, shooting Tuka several times. Tuka was hate- And what's crazy is, you know, I got family in the, in the, in the uh, from the low end, and I got family in the hundreds, the wild hundreds, which is, which is heavily gangster disciple as well, and the wild hundred in the hundreds. Um, but a lot of the time, like on the north side, the south side, like we not even connected. <laughs> like that be they, that be that be over there. What they got going on over there is what they got going on over there. Even like like. A mile away, what they got going on over there, that's their business. They ain't got nothing to do with nobody, if, you know what I'm saying? So, a lot of the time, we just be minding our business. Hated by his rivals from the Black Disciples. And over the next decade, BDs would continue to disrespect him on social media and in popular songs. And like, like, honestly, like, this this type could tell me more than I'm... Than, yeah, it can tell me more than, than y'all think I would know. In honor of their fallen friend, gangster disciples from St. Lawrence and Eberhardt would rename their area Tukaville. It's never been fully revealed to the public who killed Tuka, but ever since, there has been intense speculation that a boy named O. Tuka. Before I moved, uh, my boy John, my boy, he lived on uh, 63rd and St. Lawrence. And I used to go to his crib and we used, I used to, you know, we used to do whatever we used to do. And uh, that's just, uh, yeah, it's wild over there. I'm talking. I pull up, pipe, pipe on my lap already. I don't care. Even though, even though, even though it's a, you know, even though it's a, a neighborhood where I, that I'm familiar with the people that be in there. But it's like, at the same time, if somebody pull up and they don't know you and you sitting in the car, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna press you. They, ain't, they probably won't even press you. They'll get on you. So you gotta be very, very vigilant out there. You can't really be waiting. You can't, especially because it's war. It was war time when they lived over there. You can't really be waiting. You can't be sitting in the car. You can't be doing nothing like that. Who D Perry? from Wick City might have had something to do with it. This is partly due to him being pictured regularly with a silver revolver. And the witness report from the Tuka murder stated that Tuka was actually shot with a long barreled silver revolver. Regardless of whether or not OD was really the person who killed Tuka, that didn't really matter. Because later that year, on August the 10th, 2011, in an act of retaliation, OD Perry was killed just outside Parkway Gardens. He would suffer multiple gunshot wounds, including one to the neck at about 11.35 p.m. Just like Tukerville, Wick City was also renamed in the memory of their fallen friend OD, Oblock. And it's believed that one of the shooters who killed OD was a female teenage shooter by the name of Jakira Barnes, or KI. Following the murder, KI would begin to pose on social media with a silver revolver, similar to the one that OD was known to carry. And her rumored involvement in this murder of a beloved Oblock member would lead to KI becoming a major target herself, with matters not helped by the fact that she would regularly tweet insulting OD Perry and alluding to have having killed him, along with others who would openly claim that KI made the O, meaning that she killed OD and was the one that caused Wick City to change the name of their block to Oblock. But the tragedies in Oblock were far from over. On the 18th of October 2011, another Oblock native by the name of Platoon, real name Edward Riley, would be shot dead inside Oblock after being approached by two people with firearms. Another devastating loss to the community would come when 19-year-old Sheroid Liggins would be shot in the head and left for dead on February the 16th, 2012 also at Oblock. This murder was particularly notable for the fact that it was believed that Sheroid was killed by a Tukerville shooter by the name of Boss Trell. As the gang war in his neighborhood continued to take more and more, not how you pronounce it. Uh, more of his friends lives, King Von would get more and more involved, continuing to play a role in the gang war going uh, on in Chicago is. street underworld. Von later rapped on the song, Don't Want To Be Me, that everything changed for him in 2012, and that this is when he decided to get more active in the gang war with Von saying specifically that the deaths of OD and Platoon completely changed his plans and led him to put on a mask and get active in the gang war. Now there's a lot of speculation about- I told you, in Chicago, it's a moment in every every street, because every, every gangsta, everybody who jumped off that port, it's a moment that, that really changed their mindset. It really is a moment.
So you just said it. <laughs> about the exact murders that Von was allegedly involved in. And we might never know definitively if he was truly involved in all the violence that he was rumored to be associated with, but the very first murder that Von was associated with took place on April the 28th, 2012, when a group of four men would catch a man called King Doc, real name Marlon Monroe, shooting him as he walked into a convenience store. With Doc apparently stumbling into a patch of tall weeds after the shooting, where he would pass away and lay undiscovered for hours. Doc would eventually be found dead by his 16-year-old cousin, Modell McCambry. Doc would be remembered as an original native of St. Lawrence and Eberhardt Avenues, with his affiliation to the area likely the reason that the killers from Oblock would target him, despite the fact that Doc had apparently left the gang life behind him, becoming a painter to get out of the streets. Apparently- Can't leave it alone, unless you fully move. That's with anywhere though, any geography, anywhere. Uh... Once you're in there, once people know you as this, you gotta fully get up out, you gotta relocate to leave it alone. Hurt by the death of his cousin, Modell, that boy who discovered dog body, would then begin to get more involved in the gangs in the area too, beginning to hang around with people like KI and FBG Duck, as well as being seen on social media with guns. In fact, it's actually around this time that social media begins to play a bigger and bigger role in the gang war in Chicago. And during this time, King Von himself would become a prolific user of Twitter, beginning a flurry of activity on the platform after signing up in June 2012 and going on to tweet. This is my exact thoughts about Twitter when I first got on it. Overly weak, I thought it was weak. I still don't really use Twitter, man. I still don't really use Twitter, but... Man. Constantly about his activities in the streets, seemingly with no fear about... Wow, well, was on the Blackberry? What day was... Oh yeah, 2012, yeah. ...on to tweet Definitely. constantly about his activities in the streets, seemingly with no fear about incriminating himself. Vaughn would openly claim to be drilling in the name of O.D. Perry. He would say that he was like Phineas and Ferb in the streets with his best friend and fellow O-Block shooter T-Roy, warning ops not to diss them, claiming to shoot people like it's nothing. He would tweet that he's been drilling from young and even wants to kill cops too. He would say outright that he will whack people. He would regularly diss numerous rival hoods and gangs and be claiming to be paranoid due to having so many people trying to kill him. Von claimed on Twitter to get so enraged whenever he hears the name Tuk. My last two years in Chicago, I was overly paranoid. Overly paranoid. I'm not going to say why, but you know, I was overly paranoid or St. Lawrence, that his trigger finger just starts itching. But during this time that Von was tweeting openly about all the crimes that he was willing to do in the streets, these crimes would continue to play out. On August the 7th, 2012, Von would make a tweet saying that homicide is in the air and that it smells like a graveyard. Then, in the early hours of the morning the following day, on August the 8th, 2012, a group of guys from Oblock, rumored to include King Von and T-Roy, would be out looking for enemies to kill. Dirty Rel, real name Terrell Joshua, an older member with affiliations to St. Lawrence, Eberhardt, and Jaro City, who had actually moved out of Chicago, but was back in town, would end up being shot dead and found on a sidewalk on the first block. See, this is why it'd be hard for me to go back. I've been gone a year and I don't really would like, see? That one time you go back, it'd be the one time that somebody catch you of East 56th Street in Washington Park just before 3.30 a.m. However, in this case, retaliation- Washington Park. My baby mama was trying to move across the street from Washington Park. I was, is you crazy? <laughs> no. Retaliation would come fast. As the day of August 8th, 2012 goes by, that same evening, around 11.30 p.m., King Von is out with his close friend White White, real name Tony Dunn. They would go to a convenience store together on East 63rd Street and South Martin Luther King Drive. Here, Von would go inside the store whilst White White 63rd Street and South Martin Luther King Drive. I wanna say, is this the right corner? Here, Von would go inside the store whilst White White waited outside. At this point, a gunman pulls up, shooting White White in the back, with a police officer on the scene even returning fire and hitting the shooter who ultimately managed to escape. White White would be pronounced dead in the early hours of the morning on August the 9th, 2012. This that song he was rapping about? This date just so happened to be King Von's 18th birthday. This was a devastating incident for Von, who would tweet numerous times about the murder of his friend Whitey, including this one where he said that he had just bought Whitey a pill and gone inside the store, only coming back outside to find a crowd surrounding his shot friend.
You gotta answer the phone for your mom, man. Anyway. You got it. You got anyway. Friend, and at first believing that Whitey would be okay. After this, Von would tweet messages saying that this killing is what led him to act out, and in the days following, he would be pledging to kill his enemies publicly. Von later elaborated on his mindset around this period in his song Demon, saying outright that witnessing the death of his close friend Whitey on his 18th birthday is the exact thing that turned him into a demon. And Von would rap that after this, him and his right-hand man T-Roy would be doing hits back to back to avenge this tragic loss. Von would apparently be trying to kill much more ruthlessly after this, desperately wanting to get at rival shooters KI and Wooski, who had mocked White White's death on Twitter. In September 2012, King Von and others caught KI on the train, apparently beating her up and mocking her on Twitter in the aftermath. Von would eventually catch up with KI in much more deadly circumstances. Be treacherous on that red line. <laughs> That's the train you're talking about, the red line. It's two trains, man. It's two trains. I used to, I didn't even used to think about it when I was in Chicago because it was like every day you take the train. It is what it is. I take the red line to do, the red line take you from the north side, uh, Howard, all the way to 95th. It was that train and the green line. Them the two trains, man. At a certain point in the green line, they get real, 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 <laughs> Real questionable. Stop. But not for a couple of years. For now, he would continue to gangbang in the streets with his O-Block brothers like T-Roy, ultimately winding up implicated in numerous murders as he continued to seek revenge for the murder of White White, and one body at a time, building up a fearsome reputation as one of O-Block's most ruthless killers. Wild and Out, new season, Thursday, April 6th at 9 on VH1. Not gonna lie, every time I got on the red line, I was clutching. I ain't even gonna hold you. It was what it was. Security Analyst Boot Camp. There used to be a homeless dude on the red line, right? After you move, after you get. Uh, it was, it might be. Before you got to downtown coming up from north, from the north side, it was a homeless dude. He would ask you for change, and if you said no, he would spit on you. I promise you, one day I saw a bro on the train, dude, like, and he was coming my way. I was sitting down. I was sitting in the corner because I don't like to have my back to nobody on the train. Like, it's, it's like, no, nah, I like to sit in the corner so I can see everything. So I can see somebody coming. I can see what's happening. I seen him coming. I stood up. My hand was, I had a north face. The north face is in my, um, in my closet. I had a north face. I still wear that north face to today. I had a north face, and I had a big pocket right here. I just reached in my pocket like this, looked at him. Like, I know what you be on. Don't try it. Do not try it. <laughs> Don't not do it. Because I have everybody ears ringing in this. Don't do it. All right, anyway. Chicago Drill veteran Tay Capone would tell 16 Shot and Visuals in an interview that if you hung around King Von Allegedly. in 2012, you simply had to accept that you would be in shootouts. If you was hanging with Von, you had to accept everything that came with Von. You had to accept that you was going to be in shootings, accept that he it was going to be that, and you had to be with it, you feel me, with Von. King Von was on a mission in 2012 to get revenge for the friends that he had lost to the gang war. Losing OD, Platoon, and White White turned him into a demon, he said. I ain't even gonna lie, I might could watch this whole interview in one sitting. So he would Pretty spend decent. every day in the streets of Chicago stalking his ops and broadcasting his activities on Twitter for the whole world to see. On September the 6th, 2012, Von would get arrested, even taking selfies for Twitter inside of the cop car. He would post pictures of him and his partner in crime, T-Roy, dubbing themselves the O-Block Savages. In fact, after posting one picture together, one woman from O-Block even suggested that Von and T-Roy stop being photographed together in case somebody sends it to the police. Von would tweet how him and T-Roy's names were ringing in the streets and that people were praising them for doing their thing, regularly using this as a catchphrase to refer to his drilling, tweeting warnings to the ops that he's about to go on their block and do his thingy thing, telling them that they have two hours to clear the streets and promising to blast them on sight. Von would even reflect on a conversation that he had had with T-Roy, saying that they can't die soon because they know they're going to hell for all the bad things they had done in the streets. Von would even openly tweet about shooting well. up Dunbar High School around this time. And unsurprisingly, he would continue to be in the eyes of the law, being picked up in October for battery. But little did the police know just how serious Von's crimes were about to get in the coming weeks. On the 13th of October 2012, Von tweeted that he is about to pop these pills and spaz out on somebody, expressing frustration that he hasn't taken anybody down for a while and saying that he's getting dry. Perhaps a tweet with a double 
double meaning that could refer to sex or murder. That very same day, Von would tweet that his ops party tonight is getting cancelled. Later, Von is tweeting asking for somebody to come and get him. And 30 minutes later, Von tweets simply, ha, huh, followed by 45 Glock me. That very night of October the 13th, 2012, Modell, that same teen who had found the body of his cousin King Doc dead just six months before, would be walking down the street with another one of his cousins on their way to meet a girl. When just before 9.30 p.m., somebody approached them on foot, opening fire. Modell would be shot in the chest and later pronounced dead in hospital. No one was ever charged with this murder or attempted murder, but many years later, police documents would be released revealing that King Von himself was positively identified by a witness as the shooter with T-Roy apparently at the scene too. This meant that King Von was the prime suspect in the murder. And not only that, but King Von would tweet immediately after the killing. Now, it's important to remember that Twitter timestamps run on universal coordinated time. That's the same as UK time, and that's where I'm reading these tweets from which is six hours ahead of Chicago time. So for me to get the exact time of a tweet that was made by King Von or KI or somebody else in Chicago, I have to take the time that it shows on Twitter and minus six. I'm telling you this because Modell was shot at around 9.30 p.m. That means that King Von tweeted who died about 17 minutes after the murder of Modell took place. And that tweet was followed by yet another one reading, it's not safe around our way, which came less Von was sure leaving that digital, digital footprint. Less than an hour after the shooting. And Von's who died tweet would provoke responses from somebody who even knew Modell, with Von saying that the dead person is somebody that they know. In addition to that exchange, the female shooter from Tukerville, KI, would end up getting arrested not long after this for apparently shooting indiscriminately into Oblock, hoping to kill anybody in retaliation for Modell. None of this seemed to bother King Von, however, as he clearly got a lot of satisfaction out of having seemingly killed again. The day after the murder of Modell, Von would tweet that him and T-Roy have a problem and that they can't stop doing their thingy thing. Von would tweet that the streets are in trouble when he's coming. And he- How he keep saying thingy thing like that? He must have never said that before. It sounds uncomfortable. He would brush off the cops' attempts to arrest him. In fact, only two days after the killing, he would get into an argument with a well-known Tukerville GD known as Wooski on Twitter. Wooski had inferred that he had been out looking to catch Von that day, asking him where they were at, with Von leaving a heartless reply saying that he was getting t-shirts made for Modell's funeral. Unsurprisingly, Von would find himself on the radar of the police following the murder of Modell, getting picked up for unlawful possession of a firearm and being questioned in October 2012, with Von later tweeting that the cops- That's the thing about Chicago, the ops. <laughs> like if y'all was into it with somebody, y'all would be really talking on Twitter, like in each other's DMs, like, like maybe even FaceTime each other, like, and it'll sound like y'all cool until you hear something crazy. Grabbed him and warned him to be careful. Apparently the cops even told Von that when they question their ops, they all talk about him and T-Roy, suggesting that their names are feared in the streets. Von would even tweet after that, that his own mother was beginning to hear the rumors about his violent behavior in the streets, and she was trying to put him on punishment. But Von wasn't deterred, and he kept using Twitter to increase his reputation as a killer. The following month, Von would be sending unprovoked Twitter ads at Wooski, asking if he knew who killed Modell, provoking responses from numerous ops who wanted to see Von dead, including Wooski and KI. And to me, this is where we see King Von really beginning to take pleasure in killing. For years to come, he would tweet mocking Modell, saying it's messed up what happened to him and that he's a straight sucker. It's this sort of behavior where I believe that Von crosses the line from a normal gangbanger killing to survive to a full-blown serial killer who is taking the lives of others systemically for his own personal gratification. At this point, Von has already satisfied the conditions of being a serial killer, having allegedly killed more than three people I got no comment. in different locations with large periods of time in between the killings. And his tweets express a clear tendency to take pleasure in killing and a desire to show the world what he's doing. In a way, King Von's purpose in life at this point in time wasn't just revenge and murder for sport. It was about doing these crimes and giving the world clues about what he had done. And as the story goes on, you'll see King Von constantly hint towards his crimes on social media, in his music, and even on television. But now, the pattern had emerged and Von clearly had a thirst for blood. He was becoming a talented shooter and not facing any consequences for these crimes. And so, in the coming months, Von would be rumored to have been connected to at least three more murders, with the police only catching up to him when it was too late. Hyundai Sonata versus Honda. Somebody said I should press something, an uh, I? F and F. Maybe 
maybe that'll work. In late 2012, Vaughn was earning a reputation as a feared shooter in the Chicago gang wars, something he would be more than happy to broadcast to the world. Vaughn would be seen in clips posted to social media, sliding in cars with his partner in crime T-Roy and others, growing up gang signs and saying that they're smoking Tuca. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 and he'd be seen with his boys mobbing deep in trap houses. That ain't a trap, that's granny crib. <laughs> and Von would even broadcast his activities rolling with the gang to the local store. Von was surprisingly open about his gang-banging life on social media, and he would be particularly active on Twitter during these violent months. He would tweet openly that he was planning to shoot at random people in traffic. He would tweet that he is STLK, or a St. Lawrence killer, and interestingly, around these times, on the 18th of October 2012, Oblock native Chief Keith would release his hit song Love Sosa, a legendary Chicago drill anthem with lyrics about killing people for disrespecting Oblock. At this point in 2012, Chief Keith had become a global rap star off the back of his single I Don't Like, which was given an all-star remix by Kanye West, and ended up landing at number 73 on the Billboard charts. That song had lyrics about the gang wars in Chicago and lives being lost, and Chief Keith's music was becoming legendary for painting a picture of reality on Chicago's most dangerous block. Of course, who could forget Chief Keef's classic anthem, 3 Hunter, a song with lines all about the young'uns on his block gunning people down, and a track that made it famous to diss Tuca, with Black Disciple rappers beginning a trend of saying that they're smoking on Tuca, a sign of disrespect to Shondale Gregory, who had been killed in 2011. Now, King Von himself had an interesting relationship with Chief Keef's music. Von would tweet that him and T-Roy are the real-life people who these rappers are making their songs about. Von seemed proud of his career as a real gangster, the true story behind Chicago drill music. In fact, it seemed from his tweets that he took great pride in this. He would regularly quote lyrics from drill songs by Chief Keef and others, and he would continue with tweets expressing his intentions to shoot up the ops. In one, he says he just got a new gun and can't wait to use it, and he even claimed in one tweet to have shot a woman by mistake trying to shoot at a man, ending the tweet saying, I don't care, same thing to me. It seems that Von really had to tweet pretty much any street activity that he was involved in during this time. He would tweet that he hasn't touched or seen a revolver in a while, and on October the 29th, Von would tweet saying that he was avoiding T-Roy because he was winning, presumably referring to T-Roy having a superior kill counter. So Von would tweet literally saying that he was trying to catch up with T-Roy's kill counter, saying, give me until Friday. And just the day after this tweet, he would find what he was looking for. On October the 30th, Von would tweet that it's his main man T-Roy's birthday. And later that day, Von tweeted that he was drilling like OD. At 8.45 a.m., Von tweeted, check the stats, a reference to who has the most bodies in the ongoing gang war. According to the police, less than 30 minutes after this tweet was made, at around 9.13 a.m., P5, aka Crack, real name Derek Johnson, would be- Oh my God, just doing this for breakfast, that's tough. He shot multiple times in the 6200 block of South Eberhardt Avenue. The 23-year-old was rushed to the hospital, but pronounced dead at 9.54 a.m. The incident report would record the time of the shooting as 9.13 a.m. in the Chicago- You know, I had a girl, I messed with this one girl who did something like, she used to work in like, on like in the community on, in O Block, like right down the street. It was what she was. Chicago <laughs> time zone, which on Twitter for me, like she would have to take a bus, get off a bus, park in the parking lot, and walk through the neighborhood. I was like, yeah, okay. Mm. Would display as three thirteen p.m. That means not not through not through Parkway, but like like through that surrounding neighborhood that just three minutes Which before the recorded bad. time of the shooting, Von tweeted, laughing my ass off. Then at 9.13, the time that the police estimated the shooting took place, Von tweets, his 45 makes his ass do 40 flips. And then only a few hours after this early morning murder, just after noon, Von would tweet, the early bird catches the worm. And then going on to tweet about ops making the news, saying that he does his thingy thang for real, saying that he erases people like he drew them, saying that he does does his thingy th I do's my thingy thing. He means, like, not does. He means I do's my thingy thing and all that for real. Huh? Thang, for real. Saying that he erases people like he drew them. And tweeting that his ops aren't trying to win like he is. And saying that he is doing this 
for OD, Platoon, Sheroid, and White White. Vaughn would claim to be finding a lot of things funny that evening, once again tweeting numerous times that his 40 made someone do 40 flips. As the days went by, Vaughn's tweets would get even more bold. Just the day after the murder, he would tweet pondering whether he was messed up in the head and indicating that he thinks he's gone crazy. Things would get even more incriminating just two days later when Vaughn put out a tweet reading, Damn, Modell got killed in October. And Crack, who's going to get killed in November? Stay tuned. And he would tweet RIP Crack and Modell, as well as tweeting asking when the funeral is. Von would even reply to KI and Wooski, who tweeted each other about going to a funeral, with Von saying that he was on his way too, and even offering them a ride. Von also tweeted at Wooski, There's one funeral home in Chicago that stay getting shot up. Asking if he knows who made Modell World or Crack Crew, another reference to crews renaming themselves after a fallen member who's passed away. Now at this point, Von is establishing a clear pattern, getting the location of his targets, shooting them dead, and then celebrating publicly on Twitter. And within only a few weeks of the P5 incident, yet another high-profile murder would take place, with Von's involvement having been debatable, but his Twitter account telling a very different story. There's some things that you may not. Okay, that didn't work, y'all. Whoever keep telling me to press the I, it didn't work. The murder of Boss Trail? In November 2012, King Von would be tweeting openly about killing. He'd say that he was the go-to guy for hits in his area. He'd also say that he was the captain of the drill team, tweeting about murder and homicide, saying that he's a hitter by himself, and that the whole of O Block are coming for their ops. He would even tweet that he was sacrificing people, as well as bizarre tweets about how much he liked cereal, something that I personally believe was a coded message indicating that Von was beginning to see himself as a serial killer, something that he would continue to do throughout his career, no. beginning to see him. No, you don't understand. I like cereal more than I like you. Himself as a serial killer, something that he would continue to That's a reach. do throughout his career. From here, Von would continue tweeting about wanting to shoot his ops in the face and get up close and personal, alluding to committing murder and tweeting that he had big balls and does things that other people would only dream of doing. King Von would boldly tweet that he will never get convicted of a murder, saying that he would never set himself up to go down for a body. He would mock his ops, saying some make it out alive and some make it onto the news and die. Also during this time, Von would even react to Barack Obama winning the 2012 election, something ironic considering the fact that Michelle Obama apparently also hailed from O Block. But even in celebrating this monumental news, Von would also tweet that a black president with ties to his city simply wouldn't stop him from killing his ops. On November the 7th, 2012, Von would tweet about bodies dropping and beating the case. Later that evening, he would tweet that he was out sliding with T-Roy, who he- Why his lyrics sound like he was already practicing rap? I mean, why his tweets sound like he was already rap practicing rap? Like, these is low-key bars. He himself would also tweet, saying that he's about to go and get his gun, before replying to KI, who had just tweeted a list of a bunch of names of people associated with Oblock who had been killed, with T-Roy retaliating, providing his own list of people from KI's hood who they had apparently killed, as well as tweeting, hashtag bang, just after midnight. Then, the following morning, the news would report on the shooting of a 17-year-old by the name of Rodney Stewart aka Boss Trell. Boss Trell had been found with a gunshot wound to the head around 6.50 a.m. and was immediately rushed to hospital. And he would even remain alive for several hours, during which time he was visited by friends from the neighborhood like FBG Cash. But while Boss Trell was in the hospital fighting for his life, Von and T-Roy would be tweeting. T-Roy tweeted, man down, only hours after the body was discovered, with Von tweeting, hashtag destruggle, prompting T-Roy to infer that Von was behaving like the police. Von would follow up on this tweet, saying that people aren't dying on time, and T-Roy would also tweet mockingly, saying, no, Trell, stay alive. Then, in since-deleted tweets, allegedly by King Von, he would suggest that he had actually spent the day trying to get KI on the phone. However, Boss Trell would be pronounced dead that night at 11.30 p.m. on the 8th of November 2012. And the following day, King Von would take to Twitter once again to mock Boss Trell and his ops. He would tweet that STL doesn't stand for St. Lawrence, but instead for steady taking L's. Another tweet would drop, with King Von telling people, don't worry about who killed who, just be glad that you didn't get killed and shut up. This was followed by another tweet aimed at Boss Trell, saying, lol, you ain't a boss to me. Many theories suggested that T-Roy and Von and possibly others were involved in this murder. Some have said that it was T-Roy, others have said that it's Von, or potentially even the two of them together. But Von was on Twitter bullying. 
It is worth mentioning that there's an alternative theory that Bostrell was actually murdered by someone completely unrelated to this feud who was apparently trying to retrieve a gun that had been taken from him. But regardless of who was responsible, Von and T-Roy were certainly happy to see Bostrell gone, and they would continue to tweet boldly about it publicly. Their ops on Twitter would warn T-Roy over the disrespect, but for King Von, tweeting about the murders going on in the streets was a must. Von would post saying that the ops are dying frequently and that he doesn't plan on slowing down. He would say that he will kill an op anywhere and once again reference cereal. Saying that he eats cereal after shooting people, another hint in the ongoing joke that Von is indeed becoming a serial killer. Von would even mock the ops for having funerals. He simply didn't I believe Von just really like cereal care what anybody thought. It seemed that Von was hellbent on killing his enemies, and he would be hellbent on tweeting every single time something negative occurred in the streets. However, Von's days would be numbered, and following the next hit that he was implicated in, Chicago, man, we used to eat cereal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, so I don't know about that. that to me, it just sounded like a read. He would tweet once again, perhaps a little too recklessly this time, finding himself behind bars for over a year. I know Trap made a crazy bag on this video with all these commercials. He ain't, oh, non, I was about to say, non-skippable is crazy, ain't it? Lil James. After the deaths of Modell, P5, and Boss Trell, you would think that King Von would have kept a low profile, but no, he would continue to tweet suspiciously while the killing continued. However, when the next person lost their life, King Von's tweets would go to a whole nother level of self-incrimination, and he would actually find himself on the wrong side of the law. On the 19th of November 2012, 32-year-old man named James Holman, aka Lil James, would be standing on his porch on the 6,000 block of South Michigan Avenue around 8.20pm. At this point, four people would approach his property, opening fire, shooting him in both the arm and chest, with him being pronounced dead in hospital less than an hour later. Only 23 minutes after this murder, Von would tweet, man, not on anything, followed by another tweet reading clown ass. Von was mocking somebody, but we didn't know who or what for. Meanwhile, T-Roy would put out a tweet asking if somebody got shot yesterday. And then, only six hours after the shooting, Von would tweet that he kills GDs often. And then, in another rare deleted tweet that somebody else from Oblock quote tweeted just 21 minutes later, Von would apparently brag that he has killed five GDs and shot ten with a later news article even confirming that James Holman, the man who was killed most recently, was indeed a gangster disciple. Furthermore, a police report on the Lil James murder would describe the shooter's height and build, which apparently matched Von's description. Now, Von tweeting that he had killed five G- That was one of my boy's friends. <laughs> he refuses to listen to any type of uh, music that come up out of that side because of this. GDs after the death of Lil James is particularly interesting because there's always been a lot of speculation on exactly how many people Von had killed and who specifically he was responsible for killing. And at this point in time, Von had been associated with six murders in total. So if Von himself is apparently confessing that he has killed five people at this point, then it's likely that just one of these murders he had nothing to do with. From here, Von would continue to tweet throughout the day, saying things like, dissing him will get your people killed, and another asking openly, who made Crack Block, another reference to the murder of Crack, or P5. Unsurprisingly, the authorities would catch up with Von just three days after the murder of Lil James. Perhaps they'd read his tweets. Von's capture would be confirmed by a tweet from his sister from his own Twitter account saying that he would be in jail for Thanksgiving, with Von's charges later being revealed as unlawful possession of a firearm. Numerous mugshots of Von would later circulate online, and Von would end up in jail for over a year, for a period spanning from November 2012 to February 2014. And in the meantime, his mother, sister, and friends would all tweet from his Twitter account calling for Von's freedom and keeping his name alive. However, Von's sister would also tweet that Von told her that when he gets out of jail, he's just planning on killing more people. And ultimately, none of the more serious her that when he gets out of jail, he's just planning on killing more people. And ultimately, none of the more serious charges would even stick to Von and he would eventually end up being released back onto the streets of Oblock, where he would, as expected, immediately get back to doing what he loved, drilling, and then tweeting about it. Who did this? Get back to doing what, Is this trap Ross? <laughs> what he loved. Little King Von's boy. sister would announce from his Twitter account on February the 11th, 2014, that he would be home from jail tomorrow, with footage of Von cutting off his ankle monitor and throwing up gang signs circulating online after... Dang, 
Dang, I did all that? Yo, I didn't even mean to go back that far. Perhaps they'd read his tweet. He in jail for to Von them the tweet from his the Von more serious charges would even expected immediately get back to June 11th, 2014 that he would be home from jail tomorrow. With footage of Von This right here, this is the most menacing I'm talking about this is one of the most craziest first of on all cutting off first of all, black Air Force Ones. We know what we associate them with. You already know Vaughn kept up here. Then he cutting off the ankle monitor and he got on white socks with black shoes. That's, he's moving different. Off his ankle monitor and throwing up gang signs circulating online after his release. When he got back out, he would be back on the streets and involving himself in gang politics once again. His first tweet out was dissing the ops, of course. He would also openly wonder where T-Roy went as apparently his partner in crime had ended up in jail himself during this time. Also upon his release, Von would also tweet at famous names in the Chicago drill scene like Boss Top, Lil Reese, Chief Keef, E-Day, Rondo No. 9, and Capo. He would then go on to diss two people that he allegedly killed, Modell and Crack, but at least initially, it didn't appear that Von was able to commit any more acts of violence, because apparently, following his release, he would wind up on house arrest for a short period. But that didn't stop him from posting pictures of himself at home, dissing Tuka with a gun sticking out of his pocket. Pictures of Von with famous BD hitters like T-Roy and D-Rose would circulate around this time, with the likes of Chief Keith even reposting them as a sign of respect for the most feared local shooters. With Von also sharing pictures of his crew to Twitter openly, with the caption simply reading, gang members. Von would also tweet about it being a very scary year for the Ox, even tweeting disrespectful collages featuring photographs of rivals who had been killed recently. Von didn't care one bit what he was posting on Twitter, and honestly, it didn't seem like the police cared either. Von tweeted openly that he will kill someone on St. Lawrence, promising to shoot Ops in the face and kill them fast, dropping mocking tweets about people he had allegedly killed like Modell. He would pledge to drop even more bodies, even tweeting that he was shooting as soon as he Y'all want me to react to this? It's like, what, what y'all what want me to say? During, like, I can't really say nothing on none of this. You know how many people, like, this probably, like, this, this is probably stirring up anger in so many people. And it's not chat fault, man. He, he's, he, he the news. He, you too, he, he gotta do this. But just, this is just like, people are reliving all of this stuff because of this. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure people's inboxes, DMs is like, because you know how the internet get, man. But, uh... He got off house arrest and tweeting that he just got a new gun and he wanted to do a drive by with it. Now, on March the 25th, 2014, GD rapper Lil Mark, associated with a crew called 051, would drop a song called No Competition. This would be a remix of Black Disciple rappers Lil Durk and Lil Reese's 2013 song Competition. Lil Mark would essentially use Lil Durk's beat to diss him and his OTF crew from Lamron. But it wasn't just Durk that was getting dissed. Lil Mark would diss numerous people associated with the Black Disciples, including people from both O Block and an affiliated crew of BDs known as 600. Lil Mark's song Surprise, Dirk ain't copyright strike though. Would mock O.D. Perry and Jay Money and see him rapping openly that he is a black disciple killer, as well as proudly repping his affiliations to his gang set 051 Young Money. This song made Lil Mark a huge target for both O Block and 600. And around this period, King Von would frequently tweet that he was in trouble for both O Block to his gang set 051 Young as a black disciple would mock O.D. Perry and Jay Money and see him rapping openly that he is a black disciple killer, as well as proudly repping him for both O Block, riding around the city armed and looking for ops to kill. On March the 28th, 2014, Von would tweet that he was in traffic, tagging D. Rose, an infamous shooter from the O Block affiliated set 600, with D. Rose himself tweeting that the cops hate to see Von. This is definitely about the time on we're in Chicago. That's why you don't hear a lot of road rage incidents in Chicago. Because, like, road rage in Chicago will leave you somewhere you don't want to be. It'll go to a place where you don't want to take it to. That's why you, in Chicago ain't no real road rage. People be just quiet. <laughs> T-Roy and him all together. Von would tweet gunshot emojis around 10 a.m. on the 28th of March 2014. And only a few hours later, that very same day, around 1.30 p.m., it's believed that a large group of gang members were riding around in a silver minivan with Florida license plates, most likely a stolen car. 
Meanwhile, a 20-year-old Mark Campbell, aka Lil Mark, was at a bus stop on the 300 block of East 51st Street. It's believed that that minivan pulled up and a masked man jumped out, shooting Lil Mark in the head, with Mark ultimately being pronounced dead at the scene only minutes later at 1.41pm, and that minivan connected to the shooting being found in flames at 6.30pm that very night. It's widely believed that D. Rose was the shooter, with King Von being present for this murder. D. Rose even posted a clip to social media of him and his friends returning to the scene of the crime and filming, where King Von can allegedly be heard in the background of yeah, allegedly. the car. Hey, so took off 51st! Damn, body down. I don't know. Hyundai Ionic 6. First. Body down. 51st. Gang. D Rose would tweet. Call them, never heard of them, with a laughing face just 36 minutes after the killing. King Von would tweet, just 42 minutes after the shooting, die why, with a bunch of laughing faces. With this being a sign of disrespect to Lil Mark's gang 051 Young Money. That tweet was then followed by Von saying 051 better keep their head up with a bunch of laughing emojis. Then he says he lives for this, F the Ops. And just in case there was any doubt about King Von being present for that murder, he would also reply to somebody on Twitter discussing Lil Mark, saying outright he just saw the murder, with King Von going on to tweet at other O Block affiliates that they would be celebrating that night. Von was speaking so recklessly on Twitter, his sister would even tell him to go in the house, with the defiant Von replying to her with gunshot and demon emojis, then tweeting that Lil Mark's death was getting him attention. Von was on Twitter crazy. Hey, Twitter will block me for the lightest thing, but like that, eh. They were letting it fly on this. ...from women, even going as far to say that Lil Mark's pregnant girlfriend might have cheated on him followed by another tweet a few days later where Von claimed that he leaves people dead at the bus stop just like Tuca. A tweet that's even more disrespectful when you learn that Lil Mark was actually Tuca's older brother. D Rose would also tweet the day after the murder, saying you ain't gotta ask who shot him, indicating that he was indeed the shooter of Lil Mark, as well as proudly saying that he was smoking on Marco. But Von and D Rose weren't the only ones celebrating the death of Lil Mark, because Lil Durk, the original subject of Lil Mark's diss song No Competition, released just three days before he was killed, would end up making a trip to the very bus stop where Mark was gunned down, with Dirk telling his followers that this was a very special place. This. Hey, this, this, hey, 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 this bus stop right here though, this, this, this is a real famous place, you hear me? It's a real famous place, big. And it's bus stop, it's a real famous place, big. I ain't gonna lie to you. Because of all of the attention from rappers about this incident, Lil Mark's death became news beyond the local Chicago papers, with this killing taking place during the heyday of DJ Academics' War in Chirac series, where academics would report satirically on the Chicago drill scene and the shocking crimes going on within it. King Von himself would even go on to rap about killing people at bus stops many years later, as well as on the song Exposing Me, where he says that he is smoking Lil Mark and Tuca. And Lil Durk would go on to do the same thing, rapping in the December 2014 track War with E Day 600, also saying that he is smoking Lil Mark and Tuca. Now, it's never been definitively confirmed who killed Lil Mark, but it's widely believed that the two most likely hitters are D Rose or King Von. But whether or not King Von actually did it, he clearly got a lot of gratification from just witnessing this murder, further fueling this strange bloodlust that he was cultivating around this time. If he wasn't the one killing, then he would at least want a front row seat and an opportunity to tweet about it. However, it would be the next murder that would seemingly be Von's most proud moment in the streets, because he would end up finally catching somebody who he had wanted to get for years, leaving clues on Twitter all the way up to the killing and then, in an insanely twisted turn, not only would Von get away with the murder, but he would go on to appear in a documentary interview about the victim without anybody even working out that the killer that they were looking for was That's sitting right, right in I front of the camera. Too. Oh, I don't know how true this is, though. I feel like we all know, like, we, or we can trust that he didn't do this one. 17-year-old gangster disciple Ja'Kyra Barnes, aka K.I., was a legendary figure in Chicago gang history, with the Chicago Sun-Times describing her in a prominent feature as a prolific female assassin in the Chicago gang war. K.I. has been described as the real-life Snoop from The Wire, a reference to the masculine female killer from HBO's crime drama. K.I. herself had been close with Tuca growing up, and her rumored involvement in the killing of O.D. Perry in retaliation would make her feud with O'Block deeply personal. No doubt, King Von was obsessed with K.I. Von and K.I. would have extensive back and forths on Twitter, 
with it being unclear whether he was trying to date her or kill her. Their first interaction occurred on September the 25th, 2012, Hello, when Von would tweet claiming to have beaten up an op girl on the train. With KI replying to this, saying their arm, ear and face were injured, but she's not bothered because her gun will put a hole in her op's faces. With the tweet the following day, indicating that she had I've seen this perhaps thing. shot at Von or somebody that he knows. They would go on to have a back and forth, with Von asking KI if she's a gangster or a bitch, with KI indicating that she is indeed a real gangster. Von would go on to reply to her post, shouting out her gang, asking her why he never sees her when he spins the block, with KI replying that Von can die just like White White, with Von saying she better kill him because he will kill her and she doesn't have the good aim like he does. That same day, KI would tell her followers to retweet if they think she looks good. King Von retweeted it. KI would tweet saying that she'd beaten up someone from Oblock and that they should go and tell Von that she is tough. This would prompt a reply from Von where he would say he can tell that she's tough and jokingly asking her if she's looking for a boyfriend, as well as expressing doubt that she had even beat up his friend, with her replying saying she'd caught an Oblock member on the train who had denied being from there when beaten up, with King Von's sister chiming in claiming to have been there too and KI saying that her victim didn't even punch her back. All this provoked a sarcastic reply from Von, where he said that he thinks he was falling in love with this fighting female. Von would later post treats where he said that he's going to treat her right if she becomes his wifey, and later beginning to regularly refer to her as wifey. When KI replied to Von, Von would say that he has her on his mind a lot and that he misses her, even telling his sister that he wanted to marry KI. Now, many years later, somebody on 4chan would claim to have hacked KI's private DMs on Twitter and revealing that around this time, Von had DM'd KI asking her if she wanted to hook up, or more specifically saying he wants to nail her. She would reply saying she's not interested, to which Von replies, when all of this is over, he will have her. More alleged tweets would see KI asking Von straight up if Oblock are plotting to kill her, to which Von replies, he's not gonna lie, there are people looking to kill her. But Von would say he doesn't think he can kill her because he thinks she seems cool as hell, even having the nerve to ask her when she's going to stop gangbanging. KI would reply saying she's not going to stop, calling King Von a goofy and asking him when he's going to stop. Von would laugh and tell her that he's gangbanging until he dies and that he will never lose or quit, with KI ultimately agreeing with this and saying that she's planning the same thing, before mocking Von, saying he must feel really threatened by her and questioning if he really thinks they can kill her. Von replies saying that they're trying to kill anyone, they're not just desperate for her specifically, before revealing that he had apparently had his gun on him when he beat her up on the train, but saying he didn't kill her because the police were there along with a woman from- Hey, what type of FBI, like how you get all of this? Like how is this all- I know he didn't originally get this, but whoever got this, how was y'all getting all of this? His block. With Von saying that if he really wanted to kill her, he would have took his chances and shot her in the train or the street. In response to this, KI would reply, come and get it, because she's ready to go to war with anyone. With Von clapping back, questioning why she takes things so seriously. After this alleged private exchange, Von would reply to a public tweet of hers dissing O.D. Perry and reminding her that he beat her up, even saying that he wishes he'd spat on her afterwards. Now, Von began to use KI pretty much for entertainment, beefing her on Twitter whenever he was bored, but KI would be looking for Von in real life, however. Von would tweet that he has his ops scared at the corner store and KI would reply saying that she's on the way looking for him. Also tweeting asking where he is, with Von replying sarcastically telling her to be safe in the streets. More alleged leaked DMs between KI and Von would merge, with KI asking Von where he was, with the two of them seemingly arranging a shootout, with KI even asking if T-Roy can come too. KI later- Yeah, this goes. Hey, this kind of funny to me. I ain't even gonna lie. This whole transaction is funny. To claim to have walked through Oblock and not seen a soul, with Von saying that they're too busy to have a shootout right now. Von would later allegedly DM KI, telling her to call him when she's ready to put a dress on and let her hair down. They'd keep going back and forth on Twitter publicly, building up this insane public history. KI tweeted that she was going to the store and Von would warn her not to. Von would tweet reminding her that he had beaten her up on the train, with her saying that he's been hiding ever since. Von would clap back, asking when she's coming back to his block for a date, and KI would then remind Von of all the times that people from her side had beaten him up. Other O-Block members would tweet their intentions to kill KI too, and she would tweet that she wants to see King Von face to face. And Von would reply, she really doesn't. One tweet would see Von say that he'd spent all day trying to get KI on the phone and that her voice sounded sexy. He <laughs> While in out, new season, Thursday, April Oh man.
jail in 2013, Von's sister would tweet at K.I., saying that Von had asked her to go and visit him in jail, with Von's sister later suggesting that she had even had a fist fight with K.I., and saying that she will see her on 63rd, perhaps for another fight. When Von was released from jail in 2014, he would tweet at K.I. and ask if she missed him, with her replying, asking when they're meeting up, and adding four gun emojis, with Von expressing disappointment that K.I. didn't come and see him in jail like he'd asked. Now, bear in mind, tweeting at K.I. was one of the first things that Von did upon getting out of jail. He tweeted her twice before he had tweeted at Chief Keith or any of his actual friends from Oblock. He was obsessed, but K.I. would continue to mock Von, asking him how it felt for his friends to die while he was in jail, even retweeting Von's own tweet saying rest in peace Jay Money and going It's like we've already got it like down pack the FBG Butter said that Von wasn't the person because FBG Butter Butter was with KI when she you know got unalived and they shot him in the knee so he said he's seen the face to face the person that did it and he's that person is no longer you know blah 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 um, but we all know King Von but this is still a good story like <laughs> The tweets is almost comical. The inbox. Going on to insult him in a tweet of her own. This was a reference to Von's friend Jay Money from Oblock, who had been killed in September 2013 whilst he was in jail. With Von retaliating, saying rest in piss to Crack and Modell, with Von even later tweeting that he can't be mad at women unless they're ops, in which case they can die. And another tweet saying how desperate he was to catch a female op. Von and K.I. would tweet at each other much less in 2014, perhaps because Von was looking to reduce the paper trail leading to him if K.I. wound up dead. But in the days following Little Mark's death in April 2014, Von would release some brazen tweets. On the 1st of April, he would tell a friend that he would never start rapping and that he prefers killing ops, and tweeting that he had bodies on his gun. On the 6th of April, K.I. would tweet saying, people won't get the picture until you put them in the frame, along with a gun emoji. That same day, Von would tweet, saying if you're not where I'm from, you will get killed. That was followed the next day by Von tweeting that he was always looking for a woman and he can't find her, and saying he will stop looking and let her look for him. He would then go on to tweet on the 10th of April that there's some women he would do anything for, telling her to just hit his line. That would be followed by another tweet saying if a girl leaves him, then she's leaving the best, with it unclear if he's talking about her leaving him or her leaving this earth. That was followed by more tweets where Von would say, if a girl is with the ops, then she's getting shot. And that he's not playing with op girls this summer. I feel like some of these are just pieced together very incorrectly, but yeah, okay. And they should watch out. In the early hours of the next morning, K.I. would make the ominous tweet, in the end, we die. As well as tweeting her apparent location just off 63rd. And later that afternoon, K.I. would be standing on a nearby porch in the 6400 block of South Eberhardt Avenue, only a three minute walk towards O Block from the location that she had tweeted she was at earlier that day. And that was the day that King Von would allegedly find that woman that he had been looking for all this time, as K.I. would indeed be gunned down on April the 11th, 2014. The murder report on K.I.'s death would feature a witness describing the shooter who hopped out of a car, catching K.I. and another man who were about to shoot dice. They would run into a gangway, but the shooter kept firing, oh, apparently brother. even shouting, yeah, bitch ass, n-words, as he fired the handgun at K.I. multiple times. She would be shot nine times and declared dead just two hours later. For Chantel Brown, the statistics are more than just numbers. Within 12 short hours across Chicago, 14 people were wounded, two people killed, one of them being Brown's oldest child. I'm just going to miss her presence. She was a very, very beautiful, well-known, like, lovely girl. 17-year-old Jakira Barnes loved basketball, her friends, and being with family. It's still under investigation what exactly happened Friday afternoon in the 6400 block of South Eberhardt, but neighbors say Barnes and a friend were walking along the sidewalk when a gunman started firing. When the bullet hit, it was so powerful, she fell on the step. Residents who do not want to be identified say Barnes fought to live but had been shot at least nine times. In the jaw, in the neck, and in the chest, and in the leg. Mm -hmm. Nine times, they say. Barnes was transported to Northwestern where she died, and tragically for this neighborhood, it wasn't the first child lost to gunfire. And Von would go on to tweet just hours after K.I. was pronounced dead, saying that he loves his gang and they love him, before tweeting, mad that nobody misses him. 
and this was followed by people confirming that KI had been killed. Oblock veteran Jay Hood would reveal in a Cam Capone interview many years later that Von came back to Oblock and told him what he'd done immediately after the murder. But he literally say just like this, we, I'm looking straight, he meant why I just run up on KI and um, you know, why I just ran up on them and caught, and caught KI, she was the last one running out of the gate. I was like, no way. The day after the hit, Black Disciple rapper Lil Reese would tweet Von's catchphrase saying that he does his thing, seemingly a congratulatory post to Von who replied saying, you gots to. Von would later tweet that he needs a real bitch and over the next few days, he would once again deliver a- It's too much, it's too much he say, she say over the KI one. It's, it's, I don't know about that one. <laughs> flurry of activity on Twitter, tweeting that his ops don't scare him and that the whole gang war is funny to him. He would say that he's lost a lot of friends, so his enemies must die in retaliation. Von would also tweet saying that people wouldn't believe the things that he does in the streets and saying that he will never tell. Von would even copy KI's earlier tweet from the week before her murder about people not getting the picture until you put them in the frame, as well as tweeting at her saying he misses his old girl. Von was clearly in a celebratory mood following the murder of KI, and he would go on to make post after post referencing the ongoing gang war posting tributes to T-Roy, telling his incarcerated friend that he was going crazy on the streets while he was locked up, Von was seemingly proud of himself for all he was achieving in the streets at this point. He would seemingly update his body count to six, openly tweeting, homicide in the air, and that he made six people extinct for playing hard. Von would even post his own mugshot, saying they should have never freed him because he's a menace. He tweeted that he put people's brains in their lap and asked his followers if they would still be there for him. I ain't even gonna lie, they need a movie about Von. Go, or like a 50 Cent need to do a, 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 a show or something. Hey, this, this would be the best show of all time. When he gets 100 years in jail, Von would suggest that he is only competing in kill counts with T-Roy, suggesting that those two were the most deadly people in the streets at this time. There'd and be he, a lot of politics to go on along with it, but you know what I'm saying? It's nevertheless, get it done. would Somebody. claim to wake up in the morning thinking of nothing but killing people. Other rappers and well-known figures around Chicago Drill would continue to tweet congratulating King Von after this murder, people like Lil Reese and Boss Top. And Von would also tweet on April the 28th that there's only two places for a man like him, presumably jail or hell. Clearly, he must have had an inkling as he would end up being picked up in connection to the murder the following day on the 29th of April. But Von would never be formally charged with KI's murder. He would deny even knowing her and would initially offer to do a polygraph test as well as providing a loose alibi, relying on a woman claiming that she had been with him the entire day of the murder. Combine that with the fact that Von had apparently checked in with his parole officer just an hour before the murder worked in his favor. Despite the crime scene being only 35 minutes from the parole office, meaning that Von had over 25 minutes spare to get there and kill KI immediately after signing in with his PO. As a result of these slick maneuvers, Von would indeed be released the next day and face no further consequences in this situation and he would tweet that he beat that case like Rocky and that he was in a good mood, showing love to everyone but the ops. That was followed by him tweeting laughing faces and saying that he was grateful to be free and that he's too real. A few days later, Von would be tweeting that he beats bodies and that he doesn't plan on going to prison, as well as seemingly referencing KI's resemblance to Snoop from The Wire and calling her a dead op. Years later, Von would even go on to brag about killing KI on songs after he started rapping, famously saying on the track War With Us that he put a pretty op a bitch in the morgue, you can call her drop dead gorgeous, as well as saying that he keeps a strap like KI on the song GTA. For years following this murder, people, including myself, speculated on whether King Von had killed KI, or whether it was the work of fellow O Block hitter Big A, who reportedly went by the nickname ASCII or Ask KI after her death, suggesting that he had something to do with her killing. But in lyrics to King Von's leaked song, Wait, he seemingly rapped about the day that he caught KI, with lyrics a lot of people believe would allude to Von jumping out of the car and chasing KI down the alley, with Big A being the driver. And Von would also rap on the song Cousins that he kills women and men and can't tell the difference. But it wasn't just Von. Lil Durk would also rap in December of 2014, the year that KI was killed, on the song War with E-Day, seemingly suggesting that he had owned a gun that was used in KI's murder. Now, rapping about someone that you killed is one thing, but King Von actually went on to do one of the most psychopathic things I have ever seen. Because on May the 23rd, 2019, a documentary about KI would air on A&E titled Secret Life of a Gang Girl. This piece oh, goes in depth that. into the life of KI, exploring her motivations to become a gang member despite being a petite young woman, as well as interviewing some of the people that knew her during this time. And that documentary about KI would interview none other 
than King Von, who was featured prominently in the documentary, and if you ask me, he was just straight up trolling the TV crew, who clearly hadn't done their homework. Von would appear in the show, portraying himself as having been an infatuated admirer pursuing KI for nothing but romantic reasons. And the fact that the film crew didn't even have an inkling that Von was responsible is just crazy to me. And it's not like the info that he killed KI wasn't already circulating out there at this point. Because while Von is in jail for his next murder in 2016, word of his story as a shooter in the Chicago gang war would spread on the edgy message board 4chan, where a gang-obsessed 4chan member would claim to have accessed KI's private DMs, exposing those private messages which we already saw between King Von and KI all the way back in 2012 with this deranged 4chan user even replying to friends of KI from her account who had definitely deranged. Okay, that's how they got this. That's crazy. Continued to DM her after her death looking for closure, with that 4chan hacker writing a lengthy post claiming to have been told by a friend of KI's in the DMs that they believed King Von was her killer. Bear in mind, this information was floating around all the way back in 2016, two years after the murder and three years before the documentary. However, eventually, a whole year after Von's death, in 2021, the Chicago police would release documents revealing that they believed King Von himself to be KI's killer, with apparently multiple witnesses pinning Von as the shooter, but unfortunately, the state decided not to prosecute, stating that the case simply wouldn't meet the burden of proof to secure a conviction. So, King Von would be released back on the streets after having allegedly killed the girl he had seemingly spent years hunting down. But only a month and a half later, Von would go on to catch yet another murder which would finally land him in jail, and just briefly putting a stop to his serialized killings. Guys, my name is Eddie. I'm the founder. This trivia. All of this information at once is wild. You know, hearing it all, I, I, like we all hear pieces and bits and, and this and that, but like hearing it all as a, as a, so as people looking in from the outside, I know y'all like, dang. <laughs> After being questioned about the KI murder and being released with no consequences, King Von felt invincible. The month is May 2014, and Von had seemingly killed a total of six people at this point. As usual, he'd be on Twitter non-stop hinting at his actions in the streets, asking God for forgiveness for killing his ops, and saying that he shoots first and asks questions later. He would tweet that he's in a different league. That's how it is in Chicago. Everybody do that in Chicago, allegedly. League when it comes to killing and others need to catch up and telling the world that he's always armed and ready for his ops. Clearly Von was active in the streets as well as on Twitter, claiming to be driving through his ops area literally as he was tweeting and saying that he has an itchy trigger finger. Von would claim that anybody can get smoked for the right price or cause, warning his ops not to come near him or he will shoot. Von would claim to never be putting his gun down because too many people have died in the gang war, taunting his ops, saying he knows that they want him, but it's not his time to die. Von would even repost a viral clip from Worldstar titled, When Keeping It Real Goes Wrong, a video apparently showing a group of people filming themselves going to Chief Keith's neighborhood and getting shot at. A clip that people would later claim was actually King Von doing the shooting. I mean, just imagine having the balls to shoot at people and then retweet the World Star video of you shooting at them. The same day as this, Von would claim that he's buying guns with 100 round magazines and wondering who he's going to shoot, as well as saying that he'd been gangbanging all day and now he's tired out. The following day, Von would tweet saying that others wouldn't do half of the stuff that he's done and plans to do. John Vaughn was the deadliest troll to ever troll. It was in the streets. And Von would say that he plans to keep scoring until he wins. Only two days after that, Von would find himself attempting to score again. On the 29th of May, 2014, an afternoon party would be going on at 5722 South LaSalle Street. Von would attend this party where he spotted two members from the rival gang. At this point, the mother of the person whose birthday party it was apparently told Von not to start trouble in her house, with Von saying that he wouldn't and leave it. Von would leave the party and go and get a friend, Big Mike, apparently telling another person who was still at the party on the phone that he was coming back and that they should take the children inside. Von and Von really stood on like, like, I ain't even gonna like, it's a lot of politics when you gangbanging, but he really went by the rules and regulations of him, kind of. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. When Big Mike would return to that party, parking down the street, and approaching a group of three men outside the house, opening fire. 
Three of those men would be hit by gunshots, whilst Von chased them, allegedly yelling, why are you running? And when the shooting stopped, a 19-year-old man by the name of Malcolm Stuckey would be declared dead with a gunshot wound to the head. The Chicago police would respond to the shooting at 6.10pm, arriving on the scene where police were pictured securing the location around Malcolm's body. Apparently Von was really trying to kill two rival gang members that he saw at the party, ultimately hitting three people but only killing Malcolm, who allegedly wasn't the intended target or even involved in the gang war. Perhaps this is why we never hear King Von in his career disrespecting or saying that he's smoking Malcolm like he did to many of the other people that he was rumoured to have killed. But there would still be hints at his involvement, because while Malcolm had been laying in the street with a bullet in his head for several hours, only 12 minutes before he'd officially be pronounced dead, Von would tweet saying that he has some issues but he cannot tell a soul about them. Meanwhile, Boss Top from O Block would tweet that Von is the guy who sits people down if they run up. Now, it would take nearly two months for the authorities to connect Von to this murder, and during this time, he would continue to be prolific posting on Twitter. He would tweet that he was on the block with his gun in the early hours of the morning, just the day after the murder of Malcolm, and tweeting that all of the things that people are hearing about are him. He's the one responsible. He would tweet saying that he's killed so many ops that he doesn't have any more feelings. He'd also tweet that it's all fun and games until somebody you know is no longer breathing. And he would tweet saying that he did all of this on parole and just wait until he gets off with a demon emoji. And in another deleted tweet that was apparently reposted by somebody else, Von openly tweeted saying that he wanted to go on an all-out killing spree. However, King Von's crime spree would ultimately be cut short on, oh, wow. on prom night of all nights. Von would be pictured holding a gun at O Block in his suit in the hours before prom, and he would even tweet warning people not to try him while he's dressed in his suit. Von would then end up doing a shooting in his prom suit with witnesses describing his outfit, ultimately leading to his arrest. Von's last tweet would be on June the 7th, 2014, the ominous statement, loose screws get nailed. He would end up being arrested on firearms charges on prom night, and then the following month on the 22nd of July, 2014, Von's accomplice in the murder of Malcolm Stuckey, Big Mike, ended up getting charged with murder and being taken in for questioning by the police. Then, two days later, on July the 24th, 2014, King Von, already in jail, would be charged with one count of first degree murder for the killing- I'm telling you, this is like the last type of Chicago thing I react to, man, because it's like, What can I say as a person that's from Chicago that live at that? You know what I'm saying? It's like you gotta. Of Malcolm Stuckey and two counts of attempted murder for the other two people shot in that incident. Von's arrest for this crime would attract significant media coverage, and he would remain in jail awaiting trial from June 2014 to December 2017. And during that time, his people would tweet from his Twitter account saying that they missed him, asking for visitors to come see him on his birthday, and posting clips and pictures of him in jail during his visits. But well, everybody know Von was wild. Von is wild, was wild, always been wild. Let's go. <laughs> In Chicago, there's multiple people. There's a lot of Vons. <laughs> Just no one has known. That's oh. great. Like, we record already? Drop a wire and drop a race on Thursday. What's up? You miss me, man? Yay! Yeah. You lying. No, I'm not. You got the money for mobile? No, it's still a whole car. If you're out and about traveling Florida's... <laughs> but while Vaughn was in jail, he would raise hell, apparently helping to start a huge fire on the wing in April 2017. He would constantly get into fights with his ops, apparently never turning down confrontations. That's why I can say Vaughn Vaughn had over 20 fights in that he was whoosh, 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 whoosh. He talk about jail, he talk about that shit like it's a rite of passage, like every was a street like him he was like jail was coming yeah that's why he was always in there because he never cared about jail that's how he was able to be the type of he was in the streets because some of these savages like and you supposed to you supposed to do shit with that in the back of your mind like knowing like man go south go to jail well shorty sliding up on my, like the police don't even exist he is smoke you broad day von would remain in jail for an extended period of time around three and a half years in total and during his time in jail he picked up the nickname grandson apparently for his resemblance and image as well as temperament to the Black Disciples founder David Barksdale, also known as King David. 
It's obvious that King Von took a lot of inspiration from the original founder of the gang that he repped, the Black Disciples. Not only going by the name King Von, but also frequently saying David Barksdale's nickname, often ending sentences by saying, on King David. From King David. Also, while Von was in jail awaiting trial, the conflicts in the streets would continue hey, to play out, and Von would eventually get the worst news imaginable. His right-hand man, T-Roy, would be shot and killed in a convenience store on Valentine's Day 2017. Von's people would post Twitter tributes memorializing his friend and favorite shooter. And Von would later open up about the very moment that he got the news about T-Roy's death while he was in jail. Yeah, I P T T-Roy, man, that was my best friend. I got that nigga on my neck. That's how strong that shit. I got them game banging on my neck. That's how high we was game banging up. Fuck up. With Von saying that he completely broke down crying when he found out that his right hand man T Roy was gone. I miss my dog before they get my dog out locked up. Kill me, I broke down. I ain't bro, I ain't cried so long. But yeah, day, that's my you know I'm in jail. I'm fighting the murder and shit. I call it yeah, day. That's my right hand man. So I'm telling like, all right. Now since he go, we can tell him he, he getting that. Man, I'm gonna get you out, Vaughn. I'm gonna get you out, man. Whatever I gotta do, I'm gonna get you out, I swear to God. You know, but we in the streets, you know how that shit go. So he, he trying to hustle, he trying to rob, all type, he doing whatever he can do. Yeah, I'm gonna get you a lawyer, bro. I got you, you know. He be telling me, I be calling, man, don't even worry about it, man. Just look, just you make sure you, you know. I mean, I'm gonna figure this shit out. Just be cool out there. I call folks, I call folks. It's like, this on like Valentine's Day, you see what I'm saying? I call my mama back. And she crying and sh Ma, what the f you crying for? You good? You know what I'm saying? She good. They shot T-Roy. T-Roy got... Now what? Who? What? Look at the phone. You know how that sh go? You in jail? You can tell it on. What? Ah, all right. Uh. Now we calling. We calling. We calling. No matter what's going on. What's going on? He got hit. He got hit. He got hit once. I'm sure. Oh, damn, 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 what the f going on out there? I'm T-Roy, got shot, look, look, this is the thing, y'all don't know T-Roy. Y'all gotta leave out here to T-Roy, y'all don't know. Uh, T-Roy got the, oh, fuck up, that's T-Roy. T-Roy, that's T-Roy, oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know T-Roy like I know T-Roy, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so when I hear he get shot, I'm, he, he don't want to talk me like, don't be lacking, oh, don't be, oh, don't be, you know? He was on me, he used to be on, he used to be on each other, you see what I'm saying? Cause me and him, we back to back with my boy, you see what I'm saying? Folks got shot, I said, hold on. I said, the streets, hold on. Who got shot, who? Nah, my, he a gangster, he got shot before, he a gangster. I said, folks ain't make it on front of my I play it out, you know me, you know you gotta play it out. You in jail, it's all type of goof ass around, right? you know these third people. All of your business on King David, I walk it off, I walk it off. I'm just walking around in circles on the deck, you know. And they put their arm around me. When I'm like, damn, you good, bro, bro you good? What's wrong with you, boy? I'm, yeah, I'm good. Ooh, they, what's wrong? You just got a farm, man. I'm, I'm good, you know. They, what happened? I mean, they, they just killed T. Roy. Ooh, he what? They, I'm T. Roy. They just, they just killed T. Roy. Oh, I got to break it down on King David. I couldn't help it. They, they hug, they just hug me. These some real, you know what I'm saying? We grown ass men. Folks grab me to hold me get to there, you gonna be Irish, but you gonna be out of Oh, hold on, boy, that's my best friend, boy. Ain't somebody just killed my best friend while I'm in jail. I'm in that gonna go crazy. Oh, I'm in that don't know what's going on. I'm in that in that. Who the y'all? I'm in that man. Oh, you yeah, I'm in that in that. Nah, not my best friend, you know what I'm saying? I'm in that in that. If he get got, and a, a lot of hope for a lot of. Cause he be, y'all know how folks see his man, T. Royal. Oh, no, T. Royal. Oh, let me see who oh, yeah. The guys know the guys is looking like, oh, this preaching on. Oh, no trip, you know. Y'all know this, 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 that street. The street watching me like that. It's about some. I know, yeah, it's the street. I better pay attention. I ain't gonna keep doing. But this, this don't supposed to be for free. Von would take T-Roy's death very seriously. Even after becoming a famous rapper, he would threaten to kill trolls who would DM him mocking T-Roy on his birthday. Fuck how you feel, you a shorty on, oh, I'll kill you. Yo, that's a little boy, I'll choke you out my motherfucking hands and beat the shit out you. And then that shit fool you, boy, I'll drop my motherfucking location on you, will pull up, I'll kill you for real, man. Yo, that's H-F-E Larry, yo, that's a goofy, man. Yo, ass is a bitch, boy. 
Stop fucking playing me. Go play with somebody else, bro. I'll fuck you up for real. I don't even play like that again. For real. Despite spending three and a half years in jail, eventually Vaughn would finally face trial for the murder of Malcolm Stuckey. Vaughn's family tweeted from his Twitter account in November 2017 that they had been attending his trial at court. And despite what was originally thought to be a clear-cut case, Vaughn's co-defendant would end up implicating himself and Vaughn in the crime in an attempt to secure a deal with prosecutors, but ultimately backing out of that deal at the last minute, leaving prosecutors scrambling for any evidence that would actually implicate Vaughn in the murder. Allegedly, eyewitnesses who saw Vaughn that night failed to testify, and King Von would even later rap about the situation on the track What's Next, saying that they killed the only witness and that Big Mike was the only one who spoke. This turn of events would see King Von being acquitted of all charges due to lack of evidence, and Big Mike himself going down for 16 years plus an extra 12 for backing out of a deal with prosecutors, so a total of 28 years. After this, King Von would be a free man once again beating a body and returning to the streets of Chicago with his freedom and a clean slate. The family of Malcolm Stuckey would later admonish Vaughn on social media for getting away with this gruesome murder and going on to become a rapper. But as we'll soon learn, Vaughn had zero shame about the things that he had done in the streets. In fact, he would wear the badge of a killer who beat a body with pride. And after killing an alleged seven people in total, when Vaughn got out of jail, it would be time for a new beginning, as the newly free King Von would take all of his stories from being a killer on oh, the streets of Chicago of and put them into songs. Becoming a Chicago drill rapper with so much credibility as a gangster, his music simply could not be ignored. And soon, all over Chicago and around the world, Von's name would be ringing, as people would begin to discover what appeared to be the realest gangster rapper who ever lived. What's up, guys? My name is Mike. I don't care, sir. From killer to rapper, King Von's transition. After being acquitted of all charges in the murder of Malcolm Stuckey, King Von would walk out of jail a free man once again around the 6th of December 2017, being seen walking fresh out of the gates on social media. I feel like this is the part where it get real interesting. All the history and all of that stuff, knew about it, can't really speak on it. Don't really care to either. Oh, Fiddle, what's up? 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 At the time of his release, Von wasn't yet a rapper. It's unclear if Von ever really had aspirations of transitioning from shooter to rapper. On the one hand, there's old tweets where he perhaps jokingly said that him and T-Roy had planned to release music, but nothing ever materialized. And on the other hand, he had also tweeted that if he ever starts rapping, you should kill the person closest to you because something ain't right. So it's safe to say that at least initially, Von's plans were not music. Yeah, at least not for clearly. himself, because one person who hadn't forgotten Von during his long three and a half years in jail was his childhood friend and Chicago rap superstar Lil Durk, who had tweeted his support for Von whilst he was still in jail fighting his charges and apparently calling him regularly, even providing money for a lawyer. Dirk would welcome Von home from jail with open arms, with Von actually revealing later that his friendship with Dirk had initially had an ulterior motive, and that at first he was just planning to hang around Dirk and rob people that he knew just to get himself to $100,000. I wasn't no rapper, so, so it wasn't my, none yeah, of that rapping shit. I'm, I'm thinking like, I just need to get a hundred thousand. I'm gonna be decent. I'm gonna rob this, and I'm gonna try to rob this other. <laughs> and this is why I was thinking in jail when I when I was. You know, before I got to jail, oh, talk to your homie. Oh wow! Oh wow! Right. They say, "What you gonna do?" I say, "I'm just gonna I'm gonna go around dirt, and I'm just gonna catch me. I'm off. I'm gonna go around dirt, and I'm gonna catch me like two, three. You see what I'm saying? And dirt, I ain't gonna let him know because he's gonna try to stop me. After coming home from jail, music was the last thing on King Von's mind. He just wanted to get money and flex his newfound freedom. He would be seen fresh home, posing in new outfits on Instagram, with pictures celebrating his freedom, attracting threats from his enemies like FBG Cash. But it seemed that Von's friends would be looking out for him, and no one was looking out for Von more during this time than Lil Durk, who would invite Von into his life and entourage as he continued his rise as one of Chicago's most promising rappers. Dirk was working on his 2018 mixtape, Just Cause Y'all Waited, and that tape featured the classic track, Dirky O Crazy. Soon after getting out of jail, Von would be sitting in the back of Dirk's car, previewing this future classic before it was released. Perhaps the reason that Dirk wanted to play Von this track 
is because the song itself references Von's case, with Dirk rapping that a witness went missing and now Von is coming home. Once again, Von's real life of crime was providing inspiration for Chicago's biggest rappers. Clearly Dirk was inspired by the return of his newly freed hitter and would continue spending time with him. Later that day, in the same Instagram Live, King Von would explain to Dirk how he grew his hair in jail just to keep himself warm, and explaining just how painful the shackles were that he was forced to wear whilst in solitary confinement. It was cold them nights. It was cold them nights. Four them gray, I'm under that blanket. I'm saying that eight of them, man. I'm like, oh. Ooh, it was ugly. Ankle still got that scar on it, look for the for the thing. The shackles, them chilling. Going to court. In the hole, you gotta wear shackles. Oh, no. Man, everything. Every day. Every time you come out. Oh. Yeah, every day. Yeah, you gotta get on the phone, you just man. This when you walk, we can this. Right, no, nah, no, nah, it'd be the back of my shit, cause my ankles little as hell. I'm fooling on. Look, I got that. Damn. Von would seemingly spend Christmas 2017 with Dirk too, with them being seen together on social media listening to classic Chicago Drill anthems by L.A. Capone. Moving into 2018, Von started off in classic savage mode, posting on social media toting You would think they was closer from way before the way their relationship was. But they just linked up when they got out, huh? They probably knew of each other, but they really got close right here. Guns and declaring his desire to bring war to his yeah, office. Forward, He'd been seen on clips on social media, walking through Oblock and showing the world that he was still in these streets, untouched even after all of the people he had allegedly killed. Even speculating on who was in the comments on these lives, his ops or the cops. <laughs> Yes, Y'all told me to press the I. I pressed the I, the ad center. That didn't work for me. You know I'm with that block. <laughs> Man, this is one thing I do not miss about Chicago, the snow. I ain't even gonna lie to you. But in certain circumstances, because I'm out here now, like I'd rather have snow sometimes than some of this stuff that be going on over here. I'm talking, I was so used to it being cold. All I would need is, you know what I'm saying, a good pair of Jordans that was insulated, like a Jordan 7, Jordan 6, even the Jordan 5s was decent. Put them on, or some Tims, and then have a sweater and my North Face. I'm telling you, that North Face, I still got that one. That North Face do wonders. I don't mean one of these. You see how little they jackets is? They used to. Fans of folks them. Folks not gonna like fans. <laughs> <laughs> As January went on, Von would continue to flex his muscles on social media, and he would be seen listening to NBA Youngboy of all people, whilst chilling with Oblock native Mana Duke and telling followers that they were smoking their dead ops. A lot of your dead mans. Fun them. Tuka man. Goddamn it, Brick man. Kobe man. Do we strapped up? Here we strapped up. Clearly, Von was still in the streets initially. After enjoying some time in Atlanta with Lil Durk, once he'd returned to Chicago in February, he'd quickly find himself in trouble, tweeting that he was riding around with a gun and weed. Then he would end up getting arrested at Oblock on February the 14th, 2018, the one year anniversary of T-Roy's death. With this arrest taking place soon after he tweeted that he was in Oblock and armed on the anniversary of T-Roy's murder. Von would be arrested on charges of shooting and bodily harm on the anniversary of T-Roy's murder. Von would be arrested on charges of shooting and bodily harm, with cops claiming that he ran from taking place soon after he tweeted that he was in Oblock and armed on the That's not what that mean. That's not what that mean. Um, trap. I'm in the O with it. With it don't mean that I'm, I got it with me. It just mean I'm in the O with it. My vibe is in the O. I'm in the O with it. That don't mean, like me, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in Miami with it. Like, it don't mean I'm strapped. <laughs> Anyway, nah, I'm pretty sure he was though, but that's not what they mean though. That's not the, that's not how, it's just a little lost translation, a little. But anniversary anyway. of T-Roy's murder. Von would be like, a- It would be like, it would, for it to be, it'd be like, pop out, I'm in the O with it on me or something like that. Like with it just means I'm here. <laughs> my vibe, my whole, my aura, I'm in the O with it. After he tweeted that he was in Oblock and armed on the anniversary of T-Roy's murder, 
Vaughn would be arrested on charges of shooting and bodily harm, with cops claiming that he ran from them and threw a gun, battering them in the process of the arrest, with the body cam footage of this arrest later becoming public, which showed a menacing King Vaughn telling the police with pride that he'd just beat a body and two attempted murders. So this is the gentleman we were chasing, but on video they went back, went under the cars where we think he ditched it, got in the vehicle, we stopped the vehicle, get him out, battery, fight with that, vehicle takes off on us when we got this and then we get about 50 people around us. So, so uh, what happened? You're going to go to jail for battering to a police officer. Why it? Me? Where? And you also? I got everything. Where at? Thank I you everything. very much. We'll, we'll take I'm it then. I'm in cuffs since I was in a cop. I'll go home. It's Valentine's Day. You got the plate number since you got it on tape, man? Hey, my man. Oh, you don't have that. I'll get the rest of them. All right. All right. All right. All right. I know, but I was going to get the plate number. Come on, bid it. Switch them up. Two ends, two on T. Watch it, because he's going to. You look her? Hey, why? You ain't going to be on the phone. No, I think I'm not trying to help. What? You got a little? Yeah, white. You want it? How about the other person? All of my. And she was here the whole time videotaping. 94. Well, for majority, but not when we got him out of the car. I cuffed him this way because we had a let me go to my What were you like up for? A body and two two. I'm sorry? You want it, you're going to have it. You're going to want to cuff him in the back. Yeah, he's seen the police officer when he said it. He was a body in two attempts. He was, huh? Who, was, who do we got right here? He was, uh, he was, he was astonished. Look at his face. What were you like him for? A body in two attempts. I'm sorry. You he couldn't believe it. <laughs> oh, you, he said a body in two attempts. He said, huh? I'm sorry. You heard me? Oh, that's funny. Fun that you're gonna have it. You're gonna want to cuff him in the back. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, he's car, all man. kinds of fun. Oh. Look, look, look. As soon as he heard that, he said, nah, 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 nah. We got him cuffed in the front, put his arms behind him. He's all type of fun, all types of trouble. That's funny. Look out, look out. Let go, stupid man. No, no, we got you. Let go. Hey, we got it from here. All right. so, you got locked up over here recently? No, nah, hell no. Would you like to be? Huh? I got a J.I.P. my case. I'll try with the whole yeah. person we right. you are, you are, You're on video right now, man. It's cool. Yeah, Put your hands behind your back. Right, it don't matter. Them is past cases. I got, I'll beat them. Don't I'm getting trouble right now. Put that on the door. We're to figure it out. We got to figure it out. Figure it out. That's crazy. I'm not on um, under the right. Yes, you are. For what? Probably a trespass over here. Oh, yeah. And hitting a guy. Hitting who? Everybody got fur hook. Yeah, Thank you. This is how I got kicked out of high school. This exact situation. This is the exact situation. Like, this is how it happened for me. The security guard said I battered him. I'm like, are you? Okay. <laughs> Whatever y'all say. That's how... That's because the security guard was an off-duty cop. So I'm like, yeah, okay. Ain't no. And then all of a sudden, the cameras in the high school wasn't at the right angle, so they couldn't see what really happened. But I took all the punishment. If you can't see it, then it didn't happen then. <laughs> That's how I felt. All right. Hyundai Ionic 6 versus Tesla. You feel me? He asked him, man, the super cop. Where's, where's his coat? It's in the back seat of the infinity. It's gone? After the arrest, a furious looking King Von mugshot circulated online, but Von would be out within just a couple of days, tweeting that he believes that the cops have it out for him because he escaped those murder charges, and he would boast that he would never let them get him. Clearly, King Von wasn't ready to permanently move on from his life as an O-Block hitter, and he would still be going live on O-Block in March 2018, mocking their dead ops. Right, who got two That's all we need. Hurry, two I sure got yeah, man, oh, go Kobe, Poppy, Bay I can't be in the room without smelling two. I've got to at least smell it in front just to know like, just to know like Tuka's still around in this business. And love and memory of Tuka. But Von would also continue to be seen hanging out closely with Lil Durk 
seemingly making regular trips to spend time with the rapper in Atlanta. At a certain point, Von and Dirk would be reunited with another friend and feared Chicago shooter, THF Bezu, with Bezu, just like Von, beating a 2014 murder charge for a shooting that occurred in 2009. Lil Dirk was now rolling with two certified Chicago shooters on his team. But the plan wasn't to shoot. Dirk planned instead to transform these hardened street figures into rap superstars. The realest rappers who had ever rapped, with the realest backstories to back it up. Von would post pictures in the studio with Dirk, saying that he isn't going back to his old ways, and hinting to an upcoming career in the rap game. Since beating his murder case and coming home, Von had the perfect backstory to kickstart his music career too. THF Bezu had essentially been through the very same situation. So Von and Bezu would be paired up and placed into a studio, where they would record a song all about their shared experience beating real-life murder charges, something that Von and Bezu would open up about in a 16-shot interview. Me and some bodies and right, like, That's the story we can tell. Right, they charge us with some bodies we ain't doing. So we, we beat them. On May the 27th, 2018, King Von and THF Bezu released their first song, Beat That Body, a track coming with shocking lyrics where Von essentially admits to catching bodies, beating them, and even saying that he now plans to catch more. This insane backstory would be irresistible for Chicago Drill fans, with Dirk later revealing that people instantly went crazy for Von's music in Chicago. And he see like us, what we doing is music, and I had a studio in my house. He just tried it when he dropped the song, like the reaction was just like, he next. I'm like, oh, you own the song, you know what I'm saying? But Von didn't seem too hopeful for his rap career to begin with, barely promoting the song, and seemingly having no plans to give up his full-time job as an O-Block driller, or at least shot caller. Because in the months that followed Von's musical debut, killings would still continue to play out in the streets, with Von appearing to remain plugged into the action. Not only giving- you in Chicago, man, it's that aura around you. No matter what you got going on, that there's so many people around you that's involved, like you can't not be involved. You gotta fully be, you gotta fully relocate and get away. Von and his gang even more credit in the streets, but with these murders also providing Von with the inspiration to get back into the booth, where he would continue to record music all about the deadly violence that he would soon become famous for. The murder can't get right. While King Von was in jail, numerous people from Oblock ended up getting killed. Perhaps it was precisely because their most you know, y'all know this is coming in two parts. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it up to halfway, and then I'm gonna do the rest. And, and I probably I watch the rest tonight, but just drop it tomorrow. This fearless shooter was in jail, or Monday. jail that so many people ended up passing while he was gone. Von was particularly hurt by the killing of T. Roy, his right-hand man. And after T. Roy was killed, a new set of gangsters would form in Oblock, who went by the name Get Back Gang. This was a hardened crew of shooters whose sole focus was to get revenge or get back for the murder of T-Roy and other beloved O-Block natives who had been killed while Vom was in jail. Another one of these fallen O-Block affiliates was Chino, who was shot dead on the 17th of July 2016. Another, Big A, was gunned down in a restaurant near O-Block on the 4th of December 2016. Get Back Gang would be on a killing spree trying to avenge their fallen friends, looking to kill anyone who played a role in their demise. Poppy, believed to have been involved in hits against O-Block, would be gunned down at work on the 16th of June 2017, allegedly being shot in the head by an O-Block member called Heck, who would go on to be known by the nickname HK or Headshot King. HK was T-Roy's brother and would reportedly avenge him, with T-Roy's alleged killer TB or Terry Barry being shot dead on the 26th of December 2017. However, HK himself would end up being killed in O-Block 2 just before Von got out of jail on the 24th of November 2017. Another person who seemed seemingly lost their life to get back gang's revenge campaign during this time would be FBG Brick, FBG Doug's brother, rumored to have played a role in giving up T-Roy's location to the Ops the day he was killed, with Brick and his friend Kobe being gunned down in a get back gang attack on the 17th of July 2017. In fact, many of these murders played out in 2017 whilst Von was still behind bars for the murder of Malcolm Stuckey. And when Von got out, despite becoming a rapper, spending time in Atlanta with Lil Durk, and seemingly taking- He was still on that sh he was still on it. A step away from the gang war, Von would still seem to be looked at as a senior figure and shot caller to members of O-Block and Get Back Gang. And when they killed again, King Von would be on the sidelines celebrating the murder as if it was one of his own. On June the 13th, 2018, King Von would tweet saying that there's a new rule. You can only diss or smoke a dead person that you yourself actually killed. Only days after that tweet, Get Back Gang would unfortunately claim another life. The next unlucky person to be killed would be a St. Lawrence native by the name of Can't Get Right, 
aka Man Man, real name DeAndre Wallace. On June the 15th, 2018, around 9.50pm, Can't Get Right is waiting for food outside of a store on 400 block of East 63rd Street. At a certain point, two people- Something you can't do no more, man. You gotta call that order in. You gotta be ready when you go. Get it delivered or something. Pulled up and waited outside. And when the time- But you know, you heard dirt. Hop out like we Uber Eats. Hello, here go your pizza. Target was spotted, those two men ran up, opening fire, killing both the target as well as an innocent bystander. That's one thing I, that's, I promise you, I was a predominant user of Uber Eats. I was not going to go away to nobody's store, nothing like that. Nah, cause I remember on Howard Street, Tasty Subs would get shot up every, every two weeks. Like I couldn't even go get no, I couldn't even go get a gyro burger or nothing. Like getting shot up, like I ain't finna risk that. That was the employees behind bulletproof glass, but the whole the whole store is on the corner. The whole store glass. It's all glass. So you can see who walking in, who in there, you see your ops, you can see anybody, anybody you, you was just out there visible. You know what I'm saying? And then it was on a one way street. It's like a dead end right there. You can't really it's a like it's a it's tasty subs and it's Popeyes across the street. And then that street right there. I don't know, it was like, I think it's a one way. I can't remember right now, but I feel like it's an alley and then I think it's like a tree in the middle. I don't know no more, but it was hard to maneuver. No, it's not a one way, I'm tweaking. But it, it's hard to maneuver because it, it was a narrow street. So you can't really. Just there, sweeping up outside the restaurant. And once again, the shooting and immediate aftermath were captured on CCTV footage and by witnesses in clips that are far too grisly to show you on YouTube. Both men shot in the incident were pronounced dead at the University of Chicago Hospital, with the news even later reporting on this assassination. Morning, are looking for the gunman who killed two men overnight. They were standing outside of a store in the city's Woodlawn neighborhood when someone started shooting. A 43 year old man was shot in the chest. He died at the hospital. The other victim, a 22-year-old also died. Police. I used to mess with this one girl in Woodlawn. I used to hate going to her house. Oh, ugh. I can't stand it. Cause like, cause like this. Okay, this is how it used to go for me. When I go somewhere in one of these neighborhoods or, or go somewhere that's like, that's like highly active. This is how I used to do it. I would pull up, pull up, right, pull up to the house, look, and then I circle the block like three, four times to make sure nobody was outside, nobody was behind me, nobody was following, nobody was nothing. And then I would like, um, like I didn't, like like on these streets you would have to parallel park. You know how you pull up, back up, go forward and get in the park. Like it'd be like this, like here go a car, here go a car, you have to fit in the middle. I didn't do that. I would like to park on the corner so I could pull out if something happened. So I would be looking for those pot kind of parks. I'd be circling the block, trying to get as close as possible to that front door. And of course, you know, I got it on me, but still at the same time, like you going somewhere that's not your area, you know, Chicago is really based on if you're not from there, don't go there. Like it really be like that. It really be like that. And especially if you don't have tents on you, if you got tents on your car and people is outside, they really gonna be up on your car. They really gonna pull up on your car. I remember another time I was up north. I was up north this time. We was in a King neighborhood and my boy didn't know it. He didn't know where he was at. I knew where we was at though. And I told him, I was like, like he made a right and then he made a right. I must've been looking down I looked up. I'm like, bro, why would you come down this street? I'm like, so we, he driving all of a sudden, I'm talking, it's a one way street. You can only go this way. You can only go the way we drive. All you see is people coming from the right, people coming from the left and the street is full of people all of a sudden with bats and some of them on the porch with, with it on, with the strut. Like, I'm like, can't even put, put my head down. And he about to stop the car. I'm like, bro, hit the gas. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, if anybody jump in front of this car, oh well. Hit the, you do not stop right here. <laughs> so it, that's how it be, man. It, it get real ugly. 
And keep in mind, like I like me, I just moved from Chicago. Like the last neighborhood I lived in was, it was a, it was a, they called it Drake City. Drake City. It was off Lawrence and and, and Kimball. Um, I lived off Lawrence and Kimball. I don't live there no more, so I don't give. A, I used to live off Drake City. The first day I lived there. First day, I'm talking, I just moved in. I didn't have my daughter yet. I had just moved in. It was a drive-by. On In the front, I'm talking. I'm in, I'm in the apartment. It's a condo. I'm downstairs. I'm doing something. All I hear is boo, 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 boo. Skirt. Boom. It's an Infinity truck. Came through, shot up, you know, shot up the area. Um... Then they tried to skirt off, but they hit a car on the corner and they jumped out. They bailed out and ran. I'm like, I come outside. I'm like, I'm like, well, welcome to the neighborhood. This is, I didn't know this was going on right here. For some reason, I was oblivious to this right here, but it is what it is now. And, and that was the last neighborhood I lived in in Chicago. Now I'm relocated. Yeah. Police say the 22-year-old is a known gang member and was the intended target. King Von would go live on the same day as this double murder alongside Mimo 600 while still in Atlanta with Lil Durk's team. And in this live, King Von would set out to poke fun at his murdered rivals immediately after they were killed. And let's not forget, only days before this, King Von tweeted that you can't disrespect the dead unless you played a role in killing them. With that in mind, King Von's live stream after the murder was truly a masterclass in self-incrimination. They would start the live off lighting a blunt and saying that their smoking can't get right and asking the viewers what just happened. Hey, there you go. Can't get right. There you go. There you go. Can't get right because I can't get right. All right, hey, everybody, not at one time. What just oh, happened? Dave, you got <laughs> it's time to yeah. answer. He had the same shirt he had on when he got locked up in Chicago. Wild and out. That's a new season coming out? A wild and out? Oh, I can't skip? Oh, they on a big stage, too. When is Thursday, April 6th? Oh, it's out already. Okay. Some of these commercials do be informal for me. I'll take it. But anyway, back to the business. A lot of glitches and <laughs> Oh, uh, you right there with your hand. You take my Who got killed? That's all I'm asking y'all. Who got killed, gang? Yeah. yeah. Can't get right, got killed. Merge. Can't get right, got If somebody that. show me a picture, I don't think I know y'all talking about. Is this can't get right? Hold on, is this him? Is this can't get right? Is this ain't called snitching. I'm just trying to get verified. You give me a From here, people start commenting, can't get up. And it seems that the O Block hitters are so amused by this wordplay, they essentially confess to being involved in the murder on the spot. They tell them, can't get up. Oh, oh no. <laughs> they always make some shit before we do it. They beat us to it every time. Y'all should start killing people. Oh, we. <laughs> y'all be doing this. You be doing the man. Oh, Steve, this ain't crazy. After this, we see the crew say that it's two people down and that they're going to have to roll another one, whoever it is, seemingly unaware that it was an innocent cleaner who was killed in the incident. They said two down. Damn. Two men is that? No, I can't oh, take Oh, David, two. they said it on Ooh. both our lives. I can oh, take two this. Two pigs? Two pigs? I can take one. Somebody roll another one. Can't take Whoever else got hit. They even started reacting mockingly to the ops posting long tributes to their fallen friend on Instagram in real time in this live. Yeah. See that paragraph under that picture, you know it's over. Damn, like, best friend, kind of you just told me to pop out. I remember back in the days when you do 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 do. You just told me to pop out, best friend. <laughs> Why the f you do me like this, you bogus as hell? They ain't try to. They gonna be this is you, bro. You better not get like From here, Von and his friends would continue mocking the ops by specific block and saying that the FN gave him a fresh fade like Lil Boosie. Steady taking losses. <laughs> STL. Steady taking losses. Before I gave him a fresh fade, Boosie Boosie. Hey, they fuck with folks up. Hey, why did they even put him on front street like he was even like that though? Then King Von comes back and says straight up that Man Man must have known he was going to die and that no one will care he's gone. He probably knew he was gonna die. Oh, did he? I wish I could talk to him. Don't nobody even care about can't get right like that. I don't think they're gonna slide like that. 
I don't think nothing finna happen because of that. So they finna waste like, the rest of their money on that. We ain't even gonna act like nothing finna happen. Just y'all going to going out. Whoever ain't get shot, you lucky today. I'm finna going out. It's over. After this, they even started reliving the hit, saying that their ops aren't used to somebody jumping out of the car and firing at them nonstop. You ain't used to somebody just popping out a cut for real. Look Licking at, you, at like, your ass. Really on your ass. You just. The flat pair show, hey, you just want to do like one of these because you act like you fake tough. But get the hit you, you damn, this shit, I can't move. Crump getting that there, look for they got move. you too. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst King Von is on live bragging about this hit from another city, Oblock members Muwop posted a picture on Instagram with fellow member Duke saying that they are shooters. Meanwhile, E Dog from Oblock jumped on Twitter to say that the get back is not over. Just the day after the murder, King Von tweeted saying that the stakes are higher now than ever and that the police have their eye on him. Von later tweeted claiming that his brothers made the new op pack, literally giving direct responsibility for this murder to his team. It seemed clear at this point that Von was not only happy about the killing that his friends from Oblock were doing, but he was actively encouraging it, and quite possibly the one giving the orders. Friends of Manwan would post outright, saying that they believed King Von paid for the hit. Doing all that, tap him up and see if he can get up and all that goof ass. You know what I'm talking about too. Whoa. Do you guys feel that it was somebody from the other side that may have did it, or you think it was like a random act of violence? Yeah, watch this shit. Why is that just like a snitch? You know, did it, man. All these in the city did it, man. Okay. Does hate us. But they ain't gonna step outside them gates, though. But they know. King Vaughn. We gonna say his name. King Vaughn. But Vaughn... honestly didn't seem to care about anything at this point. And despite the fact that word was spreading that he was the shot caller in Get Back Gang's murders, Von wasn't trying to keep this a secret. In fact, he was ready to broadcast that message to millions of people. Because on July the 31st, 2018, Lil Durk's Only the Family Involved Volume 1 compilation album releases. The project featured many of Lil Durk's friends, including King Von, whose new song Problems would be included in the project. saying that name like that being all about von having hitters that catch bodies for him even warning people do not get bodied by me the song essentially tells the story of oblock shooters killing people on von's command the song also featured an intro where he shouted out get back gang and there were lyrics about killing both the target and witnesses von would rap that killing is his hobby and he says that his loyal shooters are the ones catching bodies for him. Von would also tease a music video for this track, which ended up dropping on Lil Durk's official YouTube channel on August the 9th, King Von's 24th birthday. Meanwhile, Lil Durk was impressed with King Von's murder raps, tweeting that Von was next up to break it. I ain't gonna lie to you, I ain't never seen a Durk video with that little bit of views. The rap game. And this would be followed by Von telling fans that he would soon be dropping music with Lil Durk himself, and saying that he would be switching up and not associating with anyone he used to know. Once the song with Dirk drop, I'm acting like I don't know none of y'all. I'm acting for money. <laughs> hey, I feel it. Hey, I feel you. I don't know nobody. Shoot, I'm a new man. It's a whole nother chapter in your life. I'm changing up. Dirk was clearly seeing the potential in King Von's music. And from here, the two of them would be seen together on social media, having a good time and getting the fans more and more familiar with Dirk's newest prospect. Yeah, that was the first thing you're talking about, um, bodies and like that. Mermaid man. Now I will say, now there's a lot of people that got, you know, that got a lot of bodies in Chicago, but like, it's like, Von, he was very different in his, his approach, the West, the stuff he did afterwards, the trolling, it was just like, that's what made him like ruthless about it. Man. Barnacle boy, come on, man. Come on, them get your cat dog looking ass. Come on, get your rat looking ass. Big mouse looking ass. Come on, Mickey Mouse. Damn. Von was beginning to lay the foundations for a successful rap career, but he also continued to be reckless. Around this time, Von is seen in a viral Instagram live clip telling a small child on O Block to disrespect Tuka and training him to shoot people in the head with a water pistol. Shoot him in his head. Shoot him in his head. You got a point right here. Boom. Two. Say it. It's a nerve gun, not a water gun. But yeah. You gotta shoot him and say it. Shoot him. Shoot him. Say it. Two. Two. You shot two. Say two, man. Shoot him again. 
Shoot him, Miss Hayden. <laughs> After this, Von would tweet about having killers around him and posting pictures of his whole crew. And as Von's popularity grew, people would eventually annotate these pictures, speculating on how many people each O Block member had killed. Naturally, all of this reckless behavior on social media brought even more police attention onto O-Block. By the end of August 2018, the block is hot, and King Von is seen on live observing arrests taking place on O-Block itself, even saying that he has his shoes tied in case he needs to run. And I got my shoes tied. I'm getting out of there. They trying to find the secret recipe to the Krabby Patty secret <laughs> Plankton. They trying to find the secret formula to the Krabby Patty recipe. Damn, they took the truck. No, they ain't take the truck, man. Traffic man skirt. We gonna get another, we rich. Y'all can have that one, that's the one we on your life. They're trying to see who we on. Tell me, what's going on? Somebody game banging with us, BDK. Von would tweet about not wanting to discuss murders on camera and suggesting that at this point the gang war must be over. But as we'd later find out, the war would be far from over. While King Von was making a name for himself as a rapper, still commanding his shooters from O Block, he would continue to be associated with serious crimes from a distance. With the next incident involving one of his longest running enemies and a feared op of O Blocks, Wooski. Check this. Damn, do I want to not... This out. If you have a beard... Should I go straight through? <laughs> I got other things to do, though. King Von had started out October 2018 oh, drunk, 80s, fresh baby. off the back of his song and music video Problems, where he appeared to celebrate his gang murdering O-Block rival Can't Get Right, Von would continue pushing his career forward, dropping a full music video for his first song Beat That Body with THF Bezu, which featured an intro where they both walked out of jail together. Outside of the music, Von was also beginning to notice the many videos being made about him and his past, even resharing a YouTube video breaking down his Twitter beef with FBG Duck, seemingly unhappy. Clearly Von was monitoring his reputation on social media and cultivating his brand as the toughest rapper out. Doing all of this whilst real, violent crimes would continue to play out on the streets of Chicago where he was from. Just before 4pm on October the 9th, 2018, Chicago rapper uh, Dooski the Man, one. real name Ventrice Chris, would be shot in the head on the 5600 block of South Michigan Avenue, Wait, apparently the result of a drive-by carried out by a passing ground vehicle. The evening before the murder took place, Von would tweet that there's a dark cloud over Chicago. Always has and always will be. I say this all the time. King Von would go on live a few days later with Lil Durk, saying that he's smoking Dooski, KI, Tuka, and P5. A lot of Tuka men in the ass, like, 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 a lot of fat heads and Dooski in the ass, a lot of KI in the ass, E dog in them, a lot of P5 in the ass, a lot of P5 in the ass, a lot of P5 in the ass, a lot of P5 Okay, he got his foot up. what's going on, Put man. your foot down. Hey, niggas, man, know what's going on. Oh, hey, I ain't said change, man. You a gangster. <laughs> Only gangsters eat that. You a beat what you want. You, you look nice. You looking real like you it's Chandler. You look like a PG like us, a player gangster. Damn, yeah. Chandler, man. Violence was continuing to play out in the streets, and Von was loving it, because he would continue taking the details of killings his crew were allegedly involved in and placing them into musical gangbanging anthems. Just after a week after the Dooski shooting on October the 18th, he dropped a new song called This what made Von so, his music so like, we gotta hear it, we gotta hear it, cause like, y'all y'all started knowing who he was, and y'all started piecing together, you know, the rap police and, the, and everybody that wanna can have a theory on what's going on. They start piecing. They couldn't. They couldn't resist it. His music was almost like a drug to people. Old war with us. Notable for lyrics that appear to take credit. That wasn't in that life. It gave him a moment. That it gave him. It gave him. It gave him three minutes to be in that life. Credit for the murder of female driller Ki, as well as lines dissing Tuka and Von ending the song, literally saying that he is a hitman. Von was dangerous, but now he was beginning to make it as a rapper, he wanted the whole world to know just how dangerous he really was. 
and one of the biggest enemies he wanted to get even with is a Tukovil GD by the name of Wooski. Von and Wooski had been going back and forth all the way back to 2012, when Von was catching bodies in Chicago. Von and Wooski had an infamous exchange on Twitter after trying to catch each other lacking at the local convenience store. Von would tweet at Wooski, bragging about people Wooski knew who Von or his friends had killed something that Wooski would do back to Von in response. In one shocking back and forth in 2012, Von even bragged to Wooski that he had more bodies and attempts than him, with the two arguing about who would end up getting killed first. Not only did Von and Wooski's feud in the streets run deep all the way back before 2012, but now that Von was trying to make it as a rapper, he would be contending with the likes of Wooski picking up a microphone too, with Wooski having dropped the very disrespectful song Computers at the start of 2018, a track that featured numerous lyrics insulting dead O-Block affiliates like Big A, J Money, White White, Chino, and O.D. Perry. Wooski even ended the song saying that they're on the hunt for the killers of Poppy and TB two of the prominent murders seemingly committed by Oblock's Get Back Gang. So, the beef between Von and Wooski was incredibly personal, and Wooski was also very close with the recently deceased Dooski, with them having made the song Shooters together. Just a few days after Dooski was killed, King Von and others from Oblock would FaceTime Wooski, telling him that they were going to catch him by surprise. This your big brother, yeah, you know the- I told you, remember I told y'all at the beginning, they FaceTime each other. Yeah. But, um, that's your big brother, you know. I wish I could say one of y'all was my boy. We got all groupies over there. Hey, so from here it seems like Wooski's ops hatched up a plot to shoot up Dooski's funeral because they knew that he would be there on the afternoon of the 22nd of October at Dooski's funeral soon after this picture is taken a car turns up People jump out of that car and begin shooting into the crowd outside the church, firing indiscriminately, but looking specifically to kill Wooski. Six people were hit in this shooting, with Wooski himself being shot in the head, but he would miraculously survive. Only a few days after the shoot- Wooski, I heard he didn't get shot in the head directly. I heard a bullet bounced off the ground and hit him. That's what I've heard. Shooting, Von would begin tweet we heard that. tweeting, I kid you not, comparing himself to Jesus, and then tweeting, laugh now, cry later, and game over, we won with fellow O-Block shooter Muwop retweeting and agreeing with this. Over the next few years, Von would go on to drop numerous disrespectful lyrics referencing the shooting of Wooski, like on the track Grandson for President, where he raps that Wooski got shot in his head and now has to take medicine for his injuries. Von would rap on the song GTA, Who Shot Wooski, How Would I Know? Von also rapped on the track Go and Get Em, that he will be at your funeral on time to give your mother a tissue. And then there's the lyrics on his track Back Again, where he literally says that he slides at funerals, shoots everyone outside, and that Wooski is going to feel this one. Going on to say, I bet Wooski's still twitching, he changed, something different. Those are some of the most disrespectful lyrics I have ever come across, but it's also incredibly self-incriminating. It's honestly insane that Von was getting away with stuff like this, but it really was this kind of raw and real content that attracted so many people to his music. I made it I told ya. Whether or not they even knew what he was talking about. From here, Von would continue to- They just like to hear it. Mock Wooski throughout his career, posting disrespectful pictures to him on Instagram on a regular basis. But ultimately, despite being literally shot in the head, Wooski is still alive today in 2023 and still posting on Instagram. In fact, Wooski would indeed outlive King Von, just like he had promised him on Twitter in 2012, the day before Boss Trail died. But for the time being, Wooski would take a step back from the beef with Von and Oblock, and a newly charged King Von would go all in on his rap career, continuing to roll with Lil Durk and going on to record song after song about living the lifestyle of a shot calling killer. But unfortunately for Lil Durk, rolling with this loose cannon would soon be causing him problems too, and it would only be a matter of months after the funeral shooting that Lil Durk would find himself in a car with a trigger happy King Von, perhaps succumbing to peer pressure and picking up a gun of his own with Lil Durk making a split-second mm. decision that would nearly cost him his career and freedom. Okay. Which Squarespace? On that note, we got to come back for part two, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification bells. I've been here for two and a half hours. I done watched the, the, the end games again, goddammit. I'm gone. <laughs>